Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, and so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show. Booyah. To me, that's the ex- inexcusable part. Yeah. You are on the goal line. And it's 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 baffling. And this is what I talk about. And I, I'll give I tell when we talk to Leroy and when we talk to DeQuell Jackson, I'm gonna bring this up. They say it all the time. Sometimes you think that coaches are doing what's best for the team. They're not. They're doing stuff patting their ego. Somebody has to be in your headset saying, Coach, we got a guy back there that can't be tackled by one guy. If you want to gamble, what's the best gamble? He's getting it four times. Stop him. I, I guarantee you there. he scores. I do not disagree with you there. You can't disagree with that. If, no. you, lose, if you use analytics and you give Nick Chubb oh. the ball four times in a row, you get 20 yards. You only already been one. arguing for about 20 minutes. You only minutes. need one. Welcome to I'm the exhausted. Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> a bitter defeat Monday. And here we are again talking about the talent and the easy schedule. And the bottom line is the Browns after the disappointing loss with another fourth quarter where you're scratching your head saying, what happens to this team in the fourth quarter? The team is now 2-2. Two and two, And the four seed in the playoffs and, right now. And the race to six... <laughs> Boy, somebody's optimistic. That's a fact. Well, just look at the schedule of the next seven games. I'm standing up. I'm not even looking at the playoff run in in four games. A lot of the teams they're playing the next seven weeks. I can't even smell it. (laughs) Welcome to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Uh, It was rough. I'm not going to lie. It was rough. And at the end, uh, it was a long trip back from Atlanta because the Browns, as we look at their talent, we look at their roster, and you look at the schedule. We all went around the room, and everybody said, "What are they? What are they? What are they?" Everybody said three and one. There were some that said no, no, no. no. You, you said, said two, two and two. I said two and two. What's weird is they may have lost the two games yes. that you thought they would. We're win. We're not talking about that part. And, and that, <laughs> and, and, well, no, that, that's the irony of it. And, and, and ultimately, what that what that says about this team is, we don't know. Yeah. Sometimes we they know can about be really good. Right now? There's a few that we do. I think we know about the Chiefs. I know the Chiefs laid an egg last week, but the Chiefs last night. That's, but that's prisoner of the moment. No, it's not. I'm no. going off what they've done you, all year. You three have been prisoner of the moment since the second we walked out. No. I, I mean, I mean, the Chiefs. That's the Chiefs. The Chiefs are the exact opposite of prisoner of the moment. Prisoner of the moment. Yeah. They've been good for no, the last hold on, five hold on, hold on. years. Stop. Yeah, because they, and part of that's because they have a great quarterback and a great coach. But we, that, but there's we, not we, that many oh, great oh, coaches. Oh, oh. We would know about them. We're then, not. Right? We're not fly by nighting on the Chiefs. He said prisoner of the moment. You just said last week. Remember last night they proved. Listen, any team in the NFL can drop an egg. We know that. Yeah. The Bills did. How they do the AFC Championship? Look, look, I'm not talking about anything that's happened okay. before this season. We're talking about this year. We're talking about di- la- last this night. Year. That's let's all you're talking about. No, we're talking about this year. Chiefs haven't the, played great till last night. Let's just talk about the first four games. Yes, let's go ahead. Yes. Yes. Here, you have a, everybody on this panel has an eye test. Yeah. yeah. I'm, some of us are not foolish, right? You're not yeah. kind. Of, you're not kind of me to what I'm seeing, right? It's, the the stuff Browns is, are average. The, the stuff is transferable. Yeah. yeah. Here, the Browns have some glaring weaknesses. You can see them. Mm-hmm. But I also say the Browns have some coaching weaknesses and deficiencies too. They're because some of, the, easy, easy, some easy, of the stuff easy. is obvious. Very. When you lose, it's all about the blame game. Everybody wants to point fingers. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of fingers to be pointed for sure. We'll do a quick whip around the panel. Because you could, you could say, well, it was this, it was this, it was this, it was this, it was that. Who gets the biggest piece of pie in the blame pie game for you? Well, uh, the biggest, I guess in the end, I, I, I hate to blame the defense. Because the defense was very shorthanded up front, right? But ultimately, I thought they played. You know, they he- they hung in there early. But the second half, the Falcons realized they couldn't throw the ball because they have a bad quarterback, and they just ran the ball nonstop with their second and third string running backs because their starting back got hurt, and they committed to it. Something that Kevin Stefanski and the Browns did not do. Right. The Browns were 50-50. They committed to it. So you're going Browns or you're going I, Browns I, defense. I'm going defense, even though it's hard to kill them when they only gave 23. No, points. I know, but, but you, in, the, in the end, I'll blame them a little more. Uh, Stefanski definitely gets some blame for it, though. Yeah, I'm going to twist what you said just a little bit. Okay. And this, I wrote a whole column on it last night after the game. This is my whole column. Two people I felt like let them down yesterday. Outside of obviously Nick Chubb didn't, but two people who they count on really let them down: Kevin Stefanski and Miles Garrett. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. And those two guys is who I put it on more than anybody. Couldn't agree more. 
I've got, uh, you know, I, I don't like to lay it all on the coach, but no, I mean, we, we I'm not going to lay it all on him. I'm not going to lay it all on him, but he has some, he has some culpability in it because sure. some of the stuff that should be obvious. Is to he us, the biggest piece for right. you? Uh, right now, because he he's working against the grain. He's trying to prove to everybody that he knows what he's doing. Sometimes just look at what you have in the, in the kettle. Don't and just, it. and just play it, right? Just play it, right? I know you want to do a thousand different things, but the only things I really got work is the two dudes behind Brissett. That's all I have. Yeah, they get none of the blame. Uh, last week, everybody was talking about how Jacoby Brissett's a top ten quarterback. Now we can't trust him at all. Well, no, no, no. no. I mean, we you can. were smartly, and others were saying pump yeah. the brakes on that. Yeah. There will be a regression to the mean. That's what I said on Thursday. That's exactly what we saw. G. Bush, who well, gets your biggest piece of blame pie? She is fired up. I like it. It's Kevin Stefanski, and this is the main thing that I'm going to talk about throughout the show. It's the ideal you versus the real you. And, and what he's talking about is the real Kevin Stefanski understands who he is. He understands, oh, if you're a Grey's Anatomy guy and you like wearing sweatpants at home, don't act like you wear suits all the time. And when the, the ideal you is the thing that you're pushing to people, your perception, that what you want people to think of you. And the gap between the real you and the ideal you is fear, anxiety, and most of all, control. You understand what this team is about, but you want to be known as the guy that can throw the ball around. I want to be known as the guy because when the quarterbacks do well, who they, t- who they tout? The coach is calling a hell of a game. If you hand the ball off to a running back, he gets the credit. The difference between the real Kevin Stefanski is he want to be these rest of these guys. He want to throw the ball around. Nobody said you had to have a 50-50 mix. And, and, and I'll, I'll just I'll cut it short here because we'll get into <clears throat> it a little more. But let me ask you a question. The real Atlanta Falcons said, mm, you know what? We can't throw the ball. Let's run it 11 times. The Browns have a better line, have a better group of backs in the backfield, and they're top five at both of those positions. And guess what? We never run the ball 11 times. We wouldn't even run it three times in a row. He wants to be 50-50, not because the, the game dictates 50-50. Because the sheet it's, says it's, so. It's because the sheet <laughs> and his, and his idea, <laughs> ideal of what it says of 50-50. Give the ball to Nick Chubb 11 straight times and see what happens. No, they didn't. The Falcons, a lesser lesser team did, and you see what the results are. Dude I'm with you. Dude off the practice squad. Uh, I'm with you. <laughs> I think that, obviously, because everything starts and stops with the head coach, um, that he gets the biggest piece of the blame pie for me. Y- you touched on one of my main themes. So, I think coaches, there's two coaches. There's, each coach is, is double personality. You have a game plan and a mentality and a philosophy going into the game. That works for the first half, sometimes the first three quarters. The games are not won in the first three quarters. We've seen that with the Browns. The games have all been won in the last two minutes. Yep. Every single one of your two-minute warning shows, yep. the game was in the balance. I, I don't decided. know, Jake. A lot of idiots telling me they lost the game because they didn't kick a field goal. In That's, the first nonsense. Quarter. I didn't, That's nonsense. That's nonsense. No, I'm saying that. No was man. that big? Yes. Potentially. Here's the risk reward on that decision, yeah. and we'll get into that much later. You get a touchdown. You have seven. You'd love to have seven. You don't pick it up. You have zero. So what do you do? You split the difference. Now it's not quite half, but it's three. You'd much. A, a contest, a football contest is 60 minutes, right. and the mission is to accumulate as many points in those 60 minutes as you can. If you have three, but you go for seven, it's like the guy on, on you know, a game show that knows what's behind door number one, but decides he's going to look behind what's door number two. I like Sometimes that. there's a donkey. And if he hadn't gone for the fourth down at the 29-yard line, they wouldn't have scored And by the later. way, I, yeah. that was the worst decision <laughs> they made yesterday. I completely disagree. Because the risk-reward of yeah. that play there are things that can go wrong on that play. If you don't pick that up, now I know they did, so we have the benefit of the results, and hindsight's always twenty twenty. In the moment when he's going for that play, I'm saying there's no way he's going to snap the ball. He's going to try oh, to draw the ball. I thought it was a no-brainer to go for it. Well, I would, ne- I would never punt that, on fourth and one, ever. If you ever. miss that and give a team a 29-yard field, imagine yeah. what that news conference is like at the end of the day. Because that's it's just people are reactionary And I don't want to get results. too much into the weeds on that decision. I'm, I'm, yeah. my, my but, but macro you made a point. View, I want to just respond to that's it. That's fine. Because but my macro what, view of yeah. who gets the blame, I yeah. said there's two coaches. The one that game plans all week yeah. and says, I'm good to go. Here's my card. Let's go. You use that card for a half, maybe three quarters, and you use what works. But in the fourth quarter, you need to reinvent yourself. You need to figure out, like the Falcons did, (laughs) what is the cheat code? What has worked? And we're going to stay with what worked. And in the first three quarters, what worked was Nick Chubb and the ground game. And in the fourth quarter, when the game was in the balance, 
hung in the balance, and every play call is magnified. He forgot he had Nick Chubb on the team. Yeah, and that's a that's a fair criticism. And, and, and we've seen it before. It, and we have because yeah. we've seen it before. We keep saying at the end of the game, he stands in front of the podium and says, "This is on me, and we're going to fix it." <laughs> One half of that is true. <laughs> it's on you. Yeah, but we haven't fixed it, and we've seen this for too long to think now that suddenly next week he's going to fix it. Insanity, you know what the definition of it is. When you yeah. keep doing the same thing and expect the results to change, something has to change. And I know he's too proud and too stubborn. Right. And to your point, perhaps ego's too big to let go of the play calling, but it's proven to be too much for him. Jay, he can't manage the game. I don't, I don't agree and with any of that. I know I, you don't. Jay, I know you're sometimes, sometimes in this in, in any sports profession, yeah. you have to just realize what's in front of you, right? Phil Jackson, one of the best minds in basketball, coaching minds in basketball. Hell, when we got to the fourth quarter with Jordan, we got a thousand plays. Guess what we did? Facts. Ice 23. Ice Facts. 23. Is get the ball to Jordan on Facts. the side. Let him go to work. Ride your we, horse. We're not doing a bunch of things. It's ice 23. We coming down. Ice 23. Ice 23. That's what we're running here. Everybody in the building knew what we were running. You have to sometimes be able to say, this is where we are. This is how I get to the finish line. What 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 disturbed me probably the most about this bull at the end was we turned into Air Coriel down the stretch. It's so like, what are we doing? It's unbelievable. The boy's <laughs> well, mama, the boy's mama in the stands. He's yeah. running wild. Let him continue <laughs> to run wild. That's a, that's a fair criticism. We're wasting I don't the know best that, years of Nick Chubb. I don't know that I necessarily agree with the Jordan comparison. It's really different in two sports. No, it's not. Like no team goes to their best player every play down the yes, stretch. Yes, you do. The no. Falcons did yes, eleven do. times yes, to a backup bull. Yes, you do. What are we talking about? He didn't he run all eleven times. They ran. He, no, he, he, he ran. They ran eleven times. He didn't run all eleven. Then they brought two guys off the bench. He got three more. He just said go to the best player eleven times. They didn't go to their. Go, well, when we go to ice 23, that don't mean he's shooting every time, but the ball is in his hand. And at the end, he gets to make the it's decision just a different comparison for somebody it's, else. It's well, not a fair comparison. The, but the, to your point that the opinion. Falcons went to backups, when they figured out what the cheat code was. I know. Nobody's work, debating that the Browns shouldn't have ran it more. Yard I drive. agree. I agree that the Browns should have ran the ball more. We all agree they should have ran it more. I didn't way. understand why when they had a first and 10 at the Falcons 41 when you're already in borderline field goal range. I didn't either. A touchdown's going to be tough. You're just as likely to move the ball to right. the ground. Right. I would have ran the ball there. He did not. I think that's a fair criticism. But I think some of this is going like the idea that he, he proved he can't handle calling the plays. What? Every young coach in the game calls plays. Belichick calls plays. And Belichick calls the defense. They call Andy Reid calls the offense. They don't call every play. Yeah. They just I don't. Mean, I don't they know don't. how you do I mean, I think Andy Reid calls every play. So I, I, I think he lied last year I, when he was so asked. Coaches lie plays. all the time. Maybe he does. Because Jay, they don't want to make, uh, you don't want to make Jay, his offense. Jason, 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 like, come on. Jason, Jason, what I you can got? say this. What I you can, got? I can say this. Jason, you he go He has after a this. body of work that we've seen, right? It's pretty good overall. Right. It's really good. He has a body of work. Let me finish. Wait, does Kevin Smith have a winning record with bad quarterbacks? Yes, Let me make my point. Yeah. It's not really good. He has a body of work down the stretch of ball game. It's not very good. It's because not. He's had you know what? It's it's not. We're going to kill Baker for fourth quarter fails. It goes both ways. The Patriots should look fire Bill Belichick because they're 18 and 19 since Tom Brady left. So clearly, Bill Belichick doesn't know what he's doing. That's true. And he should be fired well, you know, because you know the Patriots what? have a losing Obviously, record. Obviously, he has the last six three rings years. and he's got a lot of equity in those yeah. rings. Because he had the greatest however, quarterback of all however, time. If his name was Tom Smith. And he had only coached there for those 37 games. Probably. His ass He'd would be, be fired. His, and that's no. stupid. It, of course it's stupid. Exactly. That's what we're talking about but here. Here's the thing. Where's Stefanski's six rings? No way. Jay, okay. Baker Mayfield. Nobody else has six rings. Jacoby Brissett. Right. So you can't Baker compare. Mayfield. He's had Jacoby Brissett. Bill Belichick. Tom Brady. To Kevin it Stefanski. You no, can't. Here. I, the, what, what, the point is we're so <laughs> reactionary in the moment. No. Last week, everybody was lauding. Lauding Stefanski, what a great job he's doing. They are the fifth most efficient offense through four weeks with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. Yeah, their and offense has overachieved. They've also has Kevin bull? Stefanski made mistakes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and now, he should be criticized. He's also for them. We're, we're criticizing for the offense. Yeah, he obviously doesn't call the defensive yeah. sets. But let's but just talk the about the defense for a second. Joe Woods has been terrible. So the so defense has allowed run? 95 points. 50 of them came in the fourth quarter. Yeah, terrible. But not only is that terrible, but yeah. you know why? Because Kevin Stefanski is making that easy with three and out, three and out, three and outs in the fourth quarter. 
I, do we have control a break? the damn ball? No, Miles Garrett, no Jadavian Clowney. What did you yep. think was going to happen? I thought they'd win. Of course, they I thought they'd win. Against the Falcons? I thought they'd yeah, win. I, you I, thought I, they'd win. I thought no, they'd win. I picked the Falcons. Oh, he he did? The Falcons. Yes. He's the only I one. thought they would Jason win, but Polk I thought it would be close. The, Falcons for the, the Browns were only a one point favorite. Mike Polk also picked did the Falcons. He? Wow. So so let me so let me just let me just give you this. Yeah. You don't have Jadavian Clowney. You don't have Miles Garrett. Yeah. They was doing the same thing when both of them was playing. You still had busted coverage. You still had Chad Haney running down. Well, the field busted last coverage year. of the secondary isn't on well, Miles so, Garrett and Jadavia. Well, 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 I can't yeah. absolve Joe Woods for having this no, terrible performance. Nobody's arguing with you on Joe. No, Woods. Titus, by the way, sat yeah. in one of those chairs Horrible. and said, "This will one thousand percent be cleaned up because it's just communication." And they didn't have as awful of a busted coverage yesterday. Denzel Ward actually uh, I thought played well. No, the 43 yard busted coverage cost him the football game in my view. Yes, but it wasn't. I'm, I'm, I'm just going back to what we <laughs> saw in the Jets and what we saw in Carolina. Okay, and so it, it was wasn't, one instead of two it and wasn't three. quite that. I, I mean, 45 yards is crazy. Yeah, it is. I mean, the Titans only threw, completed seven passes. That's crazy. Well, can we get to, can we <laughs> this get, is crazy. Can we get to this? It is. There's, there's a whole They're underperforming. Uh, obviously you without clowny. And you without Garrett, right? So that's two major demotions down, right? We have that. But I, I've been saying and this. And Taven Bryant. They're missing three linemen. I've been saying this for weeks now. The interior D line sucks. Is, is awful. And we knew it would suck coming it's into awful. the season. Something they didn't address. Yeah, they said, tried to I, hide I, it. I, so when, so that's when, on the GM. So when will we address this? That's because on the GM. You can't address it you had, now. Bull, well, you had now the a, out there. Bull, you yeah. had a dude. Come I actually up think Jordan. You had a dude been come good. up to practice. Jordan Elliott played yesterday. You know what? You're Jordan, right. Hold on, hold on, yesterday hold on, hold on, I thought he played hold on, really well. Hold on, look here. So if yeah. you have Jordan Elliott yeah. and two bookends, you're yeah. not so bad. You had but it looks dude, worse. When you you're had a dude your come Absolutely. off the practice squad wow. and run you in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And run you in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Can't happen. It just can't. It yeah, can't happen. And I think I think every I think we all can agree whether or not you want Stefanski to give up the play calling or not, and that could be extreme. And I'm not just judging it all off. I've just seen this too many times. I've seen the movie too often. And in the moment, when you know how the game ends and it's and, and you're still in the lead and it's not good, that's Jay, not good. Jay, there's a difference. There's a difference between experience and reflection. Hmm. You can have experience all you want. You can say, I've been here 20 years, but you've been reliving the same year 20 times. <laughs> In the reality of the situation, you don't get anything unless you have reflection. You need to reflect on, wow, I did this last year. What did I learn from that? If I get in that position again, while well, I do the same thing. With reflection comes self-awareness. He doesn't seem to quite get it. You can be self-aware now and say, man, I do get the tendency that when I'm in the crunch time, I forget what I got and what the bread and butter should be. And without reflection and reflecting on what it is, He's going to continue to get up there and say, well, it, that's on me. Saying this on you is not good enough. I need you to reflect and fix. That's And we're yeah, not but, seeing reflect but, but and G, fix. The reality is that there were a lot of games last year that they did run the ball down the stretch and it mattered and finished off some games. And the year before, they did the same thing. They didn't lose the Jet game because they didn't run the ball enough. That's This is the only game this no, year that you false. can say they lost. Be- what do you well, mean? No, no, no. They lost the Jet game the- because of a special teams failure and the defense fell apart. This, you talk about, the, do you talk about the Jets. The Jets game, yes, yeah. they got that. But yeah. let me give you this. How many times do I got to see in the fourth quarter Nick, Nick Chubb sit on the sideline? But he's not always sitting in the, on really? the sideline. Really? I remember. I, no, he's not. I remember. No, he's not. Nick Chubb has huge fourth quarter. Green Bay last year? Green Bay last year? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Green Bay last year? I'm sure you need more. I'm sure you can make the argument. I, of course there are examples of that, and I agree with you when that happens. That's wrong. Let me ask, but let's not make it seem like it happens okay, every game. Uh, the guy's got huge fourth uh, quarter numbers in his career. Well, let me ask you this. When they was on the goal line. Yeah. And they threw the ball three times on second and one on the goal line. Yeah. How you many in the fourth? Do we know? You give it to Nick Chubb. Uh, I'll double check, but I think it was three, three. I'll double more check. times. I agree, agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. But also, like, they had the I'm holding call. He, we can't say that he does this every time. He, he has seven carries. On that. How many carries? Can we put that no, back he had up? he seven. We think three in the fourth quarter. Seven. Seven carries. But He's it, your horse. <laughs> He's your thoroughbred. So, so He's I, your best player. Let, let me, and it's not seven, even close. 12 and 7 is and unacceptable. And the game is in the balance. Agreed, but nobody's, we're not arguing so let me, that. Let me, uh, he screwed I'm gonna, up in this game. I'm going to say it With again. That, no doubt. I'm going to say it again. You know, and I, I'm not going to shove it all on Stefanski, right? He, he, to me, he just a No, guy there's that, a lot to he, go around. He's just, not a, he's just not a guy that seems to learn consistently from the mistakes. But I will tell you this, and I, this, is, this is my own world, right? Everybody not meant to be the CEO. They're not. Some people are meant to be in the second chair. 
right? And they're real good at it. But when they go, did you to ever the first, experience that in the NBA? Did you oh, guys yeah. that were great bench coaches no, but just couldn't just make the could transition? not get it because it was not they weren't cut for that. But you put them in that second chair. Now I'm not saying Sebastian's not a brilliant offensive mind. If things are good, but at the end of the game, this is what I see, Jason. It's a lot going on, and he mm. can't he can't capture all of this going on. Brad, do you right. agree with this? I think you're right. I I, I think he's just. Got he's a stretched. lot on his plate. He's stretched. I would. I think he is head coach material. I really do. And I also think he'd make a great offensive coordinator. Yes. He's proven that. If but he, I don't think he's cut out to do both. The problem and is. And I'd rather I stay on as our head coach. The, pro, the, pro, the problem is as the CEO. I, I, the problem as the CEO. It's not one he, game. He has it is to one game. What record. other game did they he, lose because of he, him being doing both? They have a 500 so let, record So, so let, me say, let me say this. No, they don't. They're 2016. Let me say this. He has to be able to realize that he's being stretched. Right. Right? Because Brad, maybe, every maybe, coach maybe, does it. No, every coach does it. I don't want to hear about everybody. I don't want to hear about everybody. Every young coach does it. I don't want to hear about everybody. I don't buy it. So I, I, it's a fact. I, I don't buy it. Every young coach does it. But here's, I don't, I don't buy it. It. here's the thing. I don't buy I'm not going to go on all or nothing. It's people. You got to take what's on the ground level. I'm not using that rule to say I'm going to put you here. Well, we always do it. Jay, no. Hold on, hold on. That's Jay, not Jay, it. You know so you're saying that you know my day job, right? You know my day job, right? And I know I got a number of departments. You always delegate. I can roll with every department and run the freaking department. Yeah, I know. But I can't run the whole show. I got to trust that the so people are going to ignore that most of the head coaches. No, his job, his job, the head We're coach, ignore that. the head Nobody's coach's job uh, is, is to make sure that, that everybody, I, I, I don't, I don't that know. everybody is in a position I, I, I really to be don't, successful. I really don't care what the other teams is doing. <laughs> yeah, I, really I don't. don't. Either. I don't either. Okay. I do. I, I don't. <laughs> That's what teams do. That's but, part of no, the no, no. coach. Is it, it, no. Are 31 other cities obsessed with play calling, or is I it mean, just Cleveland? Come on. I'm yeah, so are, sick there of are the play calling other, conversation. There are a lot of other teams that are going to play calling. Oh, my God. Every single year, it's play calling, play calling. Who should call the plays? Oh, so the head coach call the plays. obsessed with so it. Wait, it drives wait, me Okay, so well, let, 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 me, let me progress yeah. the conversation. <laughs> In Jason's <laughs> mind and in your mind, it's not the play calling. No. Is it the guys players? are open all over the field. He's one of the best guys at scheming guys open. Is it? Is it? Well, Amari Cooper wasn't open. He's had Baker Mayfield. And Jacoby Brissett well, let, let as his quarterbacks. Let, Come let back to me tell, when Deshaun Watson's you, back there, and, and then let's have I this conversation. I can't wait to see that. To say Nick Chubb at times is not on the field enough in the fourth quarter. Yes, at times. that's fair. I think it's unfair to say he's never on the field enough. I never enough said never. Nobody said never. Well, you guys were basically saying no, that. You no, no, he's your <laughs> horse, Bull. Yeah. I shouldn't have to squint to see him. Right. And you he don't. He should be jumping off the screen don't. at me when Last the game night, is in the balance. And you often don't. Last yesterday, and there have been other times where you had so well, I think let, here's let, what we're, Let me say something. Go ahead. The game was in the balance. Yes. The game was in the balance I'm yesterday. Tell, I'm the saying, game I was agree the, with you. The he game was in the balance. So I should That's have to, a fair I criticism. I shouldn't have to look for my horse. I shouldn't have to know that. Damn, should my horse be out here or not? That's what I'm doing. This guy's running tight end reverses, man. <laughs> like, what are you doing? That's, that's one way. No. Yeah, I saw that. This guy's running tight end reverses, that's man. It's symbolic of your thinking. If it works, everybody's <laughs> saying what a great play it is. It oh never works. It should never a be. Tight you know, a tight end? Which, which tell, and Zach Jackson made this point in the press yeah. box yesterday yeah. on that play. That shows you what he thinks of Anthony Schwartz right now. Well, it absolutely does. Because I said, wait, Schwartz can't can't run that play? That was Schwartz He's in week one. Best, and by the now way, it's David Njoku. If Njoku is your best option on that play, draw up a different play. That's it? That's tight. just... That's just it's trying to play. outthink the room. Oh, I, don't know. I know, but bull. But it's symbolic. You, you can't call That's it. what happens. Whenever a trick play doesn't work, we all go, oh my God, I can't believe that. Tackle, and when it works, we're like, what a tack, great play. Tackle reverses never work. <laughs> That's why you never see it. That's why you never see it. How many called, tight end reverses have you ever seen in your life? Nobody calls a perfect game. Kevin Stefanski's <laughs> flawed like most coaches in the league. He's a pretty good, in my opinion, first of all, we don't know how, like people would, some people were calling him great last week, okay? Okay. Like, I don't know after two years and change that you can call any coach great. That's stupid. I, if you watched it, did, did all of you watch the Bengals uh, Dolphins game? Yes, I did. They I were did. talking about Mike McDaniel as if, as if he's some grand genius after three games. By the end of the game, he was the devil because he played Tua. That's how nuts people are right now, okay? We don't know how good a coach is. The reality, we all scream and yell like lunatics, myself certainly included. And the reality is, after two and a half years, yeah, if it's an extreme situation where a coach is really heinous, like Freddie Kitchens, you know he sucks. But for the most part, 
most coaches are somewhere near the middle. Maybe they're pretty good. Maybe they're below average. You don't know for sure until you see it longer. Yeah, now we know Andy Reid's great because he's been around forever. But if well, they had been reactionary and fired him after a couple of years, we would have never no known. No saying he sucks. That's not what anybody – nobody here has said Kevin Stefanski sucks. But this idea that, like, when he has a good game, we don't worry about it. And then it's a bad game, and then well, we got to the take away his play that, calling. That's the problem with that. Most coaches are doing the same thing. Yeah, You're I describing 8-8. Eight eight. So, we, 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 he's we, not 8-8, eight eight, G. He's – is it fair to say he has not had a good quarterback oh in his God. entire time here? Is that fair to he's say? He's had oh quarterbacks Hold play well. Hold on. Because, because he's made them. Great. Oh right. Get, make this guy play well. Look at what he did. He did. Oh he did. That's what he percent is overachieved big time so Guys, far. Two G. Bush. Two. Go Everybody ahead. thought they'd what be did at you least expect? three. The Chargers are two and two. They got one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen. They haven't won a Bull. playoff game. They haven't done anything. Let me ask you one question. Yeah. Is the talent on this roster better than two and two? Not right. Not at this moment. No. So you thought they'd be two and two then. I thought they'd be three and one. But what? The so difference in three and one and two and two is, so is minuscule. I thought right. They'd be two, I, yeah, because they could I, be I, four. I, what, what I they want, could what, be zero and four. I they gotta, could be one and three. It could easily be one yeah, and three. It should be one and three. America, I gotta keep it real with you. Keep it one hundred. I gotta keep it one hundred. Please. We all sat up here and killed Baker Mayfield. Everybody. We destroyed him. We said it didn't matter if his arm was hurt. We said he he overthrow people. He wasn't good enough. We got to keep it moving because we got a clock. We said Odell Beckham Jr. didn't get no separation. He was a cancer to the locker room. We got to get rid of him during the middle of the season. I'm not about to sit up here and obfuscate none of this stuff from Kevin Stefanski. Now you want to tell me, well, he don't got no talent. Stop I didn't it. say he had no talent. I said he's got, he's no got Jacoby Brissett as a quarterback who you They're were trying to put in the game. Hold on, so, so let's see it. say this. Yeah. If you know you got Jacoby Brissett. Want to keep it 100? You were saying, tell me Jacoby let, Brissett. Let, let's let's, let's talk about this. Let's I need talk. You, I, need hey. you, I need you to call a spade a spade. It's okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If if you you just told me he has Jacoby Brissett as his quarterback. He also has Nick Chubb. Thank you. If you know the quarterback is terrible, why are you dropping back 35 times? I, want me, I disagree. I'll okay. tell you why. It's the same number I put out every single week, what, what and I'm it? tired of telling you what this, but we keep having this discussion. Have it. You can run the ball nine yards a carry in the last five years, and it guarantees you a 500 record. You have got to throw the ball so, if you are going to win in the, in the NFL. Atlanta did. Atlanta did. No. And you know what? That was the plus end of the 50 50. <laughs> no, no, but I'm serious. That's not going to no. pan out. I don't want to be. It's a 500 record. If you can run the ball nine yards. So, what do you want to do? You want to no, fire some no, games listen, before games? Historically, the last yeah. five years, teams that average nine yards a carry are 12 and 12 coming into this year. This, it this, guarantees so this, you so nothing. It let, works sometimes, and both, it doesn't right, work just as much as it does work. This is what I want. I want Stefans to give up the office of play calling. I want you just to be the CEO. That's all I want you to be. I want I want Barry to go ahead and fill this middle here with Indama Kinsu. Sue go and get that. And then I told you on the other side, they were going to double. I told you last week they're going to double Cooper yep. here. He wasn't going to get another 100 yards. And then you got two dotted script dudes on the other side. They pose no threat and they didn't care. And about yesterday, <laughs> you know, we, we asked earlier, OK, so Cooper's not going to always have 10 catches. Mm -mm. Who picks you up the slack when balance. he does it? And the answer is exactly what we thought the answer was going to well, be. I thought Donovan Peoples-Jones had a decent game. He caught two balls, I think. He had a great no. catch. He's out of bounds. The one down the side. Well, like five other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, well, like no, but I mean, Njoku I mean, had a couple here. big plays. The joke has been better than I thought he was. So, like, yeah. so, so, he had, I think, I think Njoku so, had five catches. And we just got done saying the, a week I, or two ago that Travis Kelsey combo works. Yeah, so let me leave out one thing. And the other thing, five catches, 71 yards. That's pretty good game. The interior of the defense, the interior of the defensive line is awful. Right, it is awful. Yeah, we know. And then I will just yeah. say the backers are leaving a lot to be desired too, because by the they're, way, they're not plugging uh -huh. the holes up front. I, I mean, watched all. I watched. I, listen, I seen the all twenty-two. I've never seen worse run fits, no awful. gap alignment. Awful. These guys, it act like they had never understood that one person has. A and gap. why didn't they fix that in the process? Because you knew what the Falcons were going to do. They're like on those one, two uh, drives that were seventy plus yards, seventeen plays. Almost all of them runs, and m much of them look exactly the same, and we just weren't doing anything it was, different. It and one other name we haven't mentioned, Anthony Walker is a huge loss to this yeah. defense. Yeah. exactly I, what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly what you're talking about. JOK's been, been, been terrible. He's I've, lost out Oh, there. I don't think he was terrible. Not terrible. He's I, had I, I moments, thought, but there were times yesterday in run defense where I'm like, oh. see, this where is where is? So, you know what? This was the first. You don't know where the ball's going. This was the first game without Walker. This was the first game without Walker. Let's see if Jacob Phillips and some of these other guys can clean some of this up. Jacob Phillips was awful. He did not have a good game. He was awful. But this this goes back this goes back to, to roster building. 
when you have athletic okay. middle linebackers, you got to have yeah. D tackles yeah. that keep them off of them. Right. right. JOK okay needs right. to run this yeah. way and this way right. and tackle people. When he gets was guards it, on was, that next was, level, was he gets engaged, he's done. done. He's and done. again, I will tell you, Jordan Elliott has been much better than I thought he would be. They need one more. If you but get they got nobody else. In okay. They, okay. Yeah. But if you have Miles and Jadavian right. and Jordan so Elliott, right. so let me ask you a question. That's not bad. Is Jordan Elliott better than Indama Kinsu? Well, there's 31 other teams out there who have passed on Indama Kinsu. Well, we'll play with some money. <laughs> and, and, and he, uh, he, 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 he ain't cut nobody that he wants to it. I don't listen at this point. I don't know if Indominus Sue can help or not. Maybe he can. I'm uh, sorry, on Anthony he's, Schwartz. He's, it's time to move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time to move on. Well, he's a warm body. At this if you're point. if you're running a tight end reverse over Anthony that's Schwartz, yeah. Yeah. What's because that's doing his value. On, what's he doing on the roster? If he can't return it, kicks and punts, and he can't even you can't hand it to him, then move on. I said that before he went to the regular season. He was done. I had said too. If he was wearing a different jersey and wasn't a draft pick, he'd be gone. you doing field goal dance. What's up? Yeah, no, I got I got to hop in here. I Field thought Jordan Elliott played really well yesterday, and it was a different Jordan Elliott we saw against the Falcons Must than we saw in the first two bars, weeks. Mike. Yeah. What do you say? Must have been those built bars. Exactly where I'm going. It definitely is a lot stronger because he's been bulking up on the built <laughs> bars. He tried the coconut flavor, the same one Jay tried on Thursday's show. It's great. And he texted me and said, personally, best thing he ever had in his whole life. No kidding. Maybe. There's an asterisk next to yeah, this. Yeah, that may or may not be true, was, right? May or may not be true, but right. he said it was delicious. He, despite making an NFL contract, still used the some amazing promo Stefanski? code locked on 15. Yeah. He got 15% off. A guy who doesn't need built bars, Tim Couch. Big enough by himself. Oh, Tim, yes. what's up? Tim, welcome to the show. Who do you put the most blame uh, on? Oh, yeah, let's Timmy. go, Timmy. What? We're playing the blame game. Let's, on get, this let's get opinionated, Timmy. Who, who gets the blame? <laughs> We've been Man, there's a lot of baby. blame to go around after a loss like that. <laughs> who, who gets the biggest piece of blame pie? Uh, I'd probably go with the defense. You know, even though they had a bunch of guys out on that side of the ball, Falcons ran the ball right down their throat in, uh, in the second half. What, they going to like a 10-play, 75-yard drive, all yeah. runs? Like, and, you <laughs> with know, the practice like players. Guys, with the practice the, players. The, the run, <laughs> yeah. well, I thought the run fits were terrible. Guys were out of position. Uh, they were getting blown off the ball. Um, you know, and the, and the running back that came in was just activated off the practice squad, so it wasn't like he was some <laughs> – Superstar back in the backfield. So uh, that, that was tough to watch. Um, I thought the offense, you know, they ran the football well. Jacoby, I think, played another really good football game. Um, he's certainly exceeded uh, my expectations, what I thought he was going to be uh, in this offense. I think he's doing a really nice job and, um, you know, going to the right spot with the ball. He's accurate, uh, shows a strong arm. Um, but, it's, uh, you know, like again, like just like last week, a, a brutal loss, man. This team uh, has let a couple games slip away now that they certainly should have won. Joe Woods is, to, is it Joe Woods to blame for the, the I mean they did the same thing every time on two straight drives yeah. and it was almost like it's almost like the players had bags over their heads <laughs> yeah you know I, I don't see a lot of adjustments out there I really don't you know it wasn't like the Falcons were trying to disguise what they were doing yeah. you know they're, they're just lining up and saying we're going to run it downhill until you stop it and and the Browns made no adjustments man they they couldn't stop the run at all and that, that's that's so demoralizing to a defense you know when you're just sitting back like that and, and a team's just saying you know, we're going to run it at you and you can't stop it. There's nothing you can do about it. And and, you, and they couldn't. So that, that was frustrating. Uh, you know, you certainly want to see some adjustments, see the guys step up and, uh, you know, play a little bit more discipline with their eyes and be in the right spot. But, uh, you know, we just haven't seen it so far this year, especially in the second half of games. Hey, Tim, uh, Tim, do you see the interior line? I mean, it's getting manhandled up front the interior <laughs> defensive line. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is like Pee Wee Football League. I'm like, you get his pancakes, smashed, everything else. And the dude off the practice squad just two days ago. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna run for I'll run for 70. I don't care. That's crazy. And they just kept giving the ball back. They're like, oh my God, they're letting him get five. Let him get six. Let him get tell me what prevents them from signing a guy like Kendama can sue. Please, I'm tired of it. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what stops them from going to get a guy like that. At some point, you got to make a move because, you know, you're exactly right. That interior is getting blown off the ball. Uh, they're getting no no, um, no penetration into the backfield. They're not uh, clogging up the gaps in the run game. So it's uh, it, it's certainly been frustrating to watch, and they're going to have to evaluate that and see what's out there, see who's available, and hopefully they can make a move and shore this thing up because it's, it's not going to get any easier. These next few games, man, are going to be brutal. Uh, the schedule gets really tough starting, uh, you know, with the Chargers and, uh, and so on. So it's, uh, they're going to have to get it fixed and get it fixed quickly. Tim, I, I understand that Kareem Hunt is a better pass catcher than Nick Chubb. So you're going to want him when you're running two-minute two offense or whatever down the stretch. Mm -hmm. However, my thought has been, why in that situation wouldn't you have both of them on the field? Good point. Knowing that Nick Chubb is your best player, you don't want to necessarily sit Kareem Hunt because, you know, he 
Hunt, Chubb, and Cooper are your three best players. I would think in a two-minute drill, even though it may be unorthodox to have two running backs in that situation, that you'd want those three best players when the rest of the Browns' receivers are kind of mediocre at best. I, is there any reason why he couldn't do that down the stretch? Why do you think Chubb is on the bench when the game is on the line occasionally? Yeah, you know, I, I, think, I think it's a really good point. You know, you certainly want your best players out there. A lot of times in those situations, you're going, you know, more wide receivers on the field, more speed on the field. You're trying to get three, four wide outs out there. But, you know, like, like you said, if you get uh, Nick Chubb out there, man, I, I would rather throw Nick Chubb a screen pass than I would – trusting those other guys trying to run a, yeah. an out route or a corner route or a post or whatever. I, I want the ball in Nick Chubb's hands as many times as I can possibly get it there because that dude, man, he is so fun to watch. He, he is unbelievable. The way he is able to break tackles, the way he absorbs contact and just keeps his legs moving. Uh, I, I would get that ball. I would get that guy the ball in every situation possible. And I'm with you on that. Get both those guys out there. Right. Adjust what you're doing offensively in, the, in a two-minute drill. Adjust your philosophy. Get your best players on the field. Get the ball in their hands. Right, and like you look at you look at Kareem Hunt, who's such a premier pass-catching running back. Like instead of having Anthony Schwartz out wide or some other, you know, David Bell, who's very inexperienced, hasn't mm -hmm. done much. I'd rather split out. Kareem Hunt or put Kareem in the slot and have Nick Chubb in the backfield. I think you're more likely to succeed that way. Yeah, I think so. You know, we've seen Nick or Nick Chubb um, or uh, Kareem Hunt lined up out wide a few times this year. Yep. Early in the season, we saw him out there. They were throwing some slants. They were throwing some hitches. And he catches the ball really well. He runs good routes for a running back. So he is kind of like an extra wide receiver out there. But he has that ability to make plays after the catch. And, uh, you know, both those guys on the field at the same time, man, is, is lethal. It's, just, it's extremely hard to stop. And hopefully we can see a little more of it. Hey, Tim, of course, you just, you just raised a good point. I'm glad you said that. Why do you think it is so difficult, it's been difficult so far for Kevin to make these adjustments? Because at some point, we go through three quarters, we got a feel of the game now. It's not so much on the sheet. What is the eye test? It, to me, it seems like he's having difficulty with the eye test. Because after three quarters, I've seen pretty much what this thing looks like. What, what, why, why is such difficulty making adjustments? You know, I'm not sure. Um, you know, there's, you know, obviously a lot of talk about should he be calling the play? Should he hire someone to call the play so he can manage the game? I think Stefanski is is an incredible play caller myself. I think he gets guys wide open. I love, I love the way he designs plays. Uh, I like everything about his play calling. Now, I think he does need someone, maybe an assistant coach, to be a game manager of situations mm -hmm. for him because it's so difficult to, to do try both. to call plays and think of down and distance and, you know, what do they do in third and short? Are they a man team? Are they a blitz team? Are they a zone team? You're, all this is going through your head. You're trying to get a play call in before the, uh, a play clock runs out. You forget about situations sometimes. So if he had an assistant coach there saying, hey, coach, you know, like in the Jets game, you know, it's hard to remember to tell Nick Chubb to go down. You know, you're, you're in that situation. You're trying to move the ball. You're trying to score. Just a quick reminder on the sideline. Hey, coach, tell him to go down. You know, all we got to do is get a first down here. We can take a knee, run the clock out. So you can't think of everything at the same time, man. But I do really like the way he calls plays. I think he's a terrific play caller, very smart guy. I like the way he designs it, gets guys open. Um, you know, I just think he needs a little help as, uh, as far as game management goes. You know, Tim, I, to me, I, I, I'll give Stefanski his, his credit. I, I, he can, he's not uh, uh, some sort of novice. He could, he could call plays. He diagrams plays well, right? My problem is this. Um, on the defensive side of the football, at some point in time, you are responsible in a hierarchy of what is, what is my defense doing? And I know you may like your coach. I know you may have hired him. But at the end of the day, do you see the Browns beating any high level quarterbacks if they're busting? They've had a major bust every single game this year. Yep. For, it was 45 yards this time when, when it, the game's in a balance. Against four bad quarterbacks. How, how are we, do you think we could beat Herbert and Burrow and Lamar Jackson if we're busting these coverages every week now? No, there, there's no way. And, you know, just like you said, we've seen it every week. Going back to the first game, we saw Baker throw a whatever it was, 75-yard touchdown because of a busted coverage. We saw them lose games because of a busted coverage against the Jets. So it's been, it's been every week, man, and it gets really frustrating to watch. Like, you almost expect it now. You know, you're watching these games, and you're just waiting for that big play to happen because it's been so consistent with these guys. Their communication's not there. I don't know what the, what's going on there in the defensive secondary because they have some talented players back there. They're just not communicating. Guys aren't on the same page. And, you know, when you're not talking, guys are going to get out of position. And, uh, you know, you're going to see what, what we've been seeing the last few weeks and the guys getting behind the secondary for huge plays. So, no, there's no way they're going to be able to do that and, and beat a Justin Herbert or, or Lamar Jackson or, or whoever they got coming up in these next few games. So they're, they're going to have to get that fixed and uh, get it fixed immediately.
Tim, settle a bet between me and Bull. Now, for most of the show, it's been me and Bull on everyone else, the two of us against the three of them, yeah. because they've lost their minds <laughs> on Stefanski for the most part. Clearly. But I did, I did have a bone to pick on the opening drive. I did want him to kick the field goal because they got chunk play, chunk play, chunk play down to the goal line. They run a no huddle. They lose two yards on, on third down. It's now fourth and three. It's not fourth and one. It's fourth and three from the four. In my opinion, take the points, take the three nothing lead, live to fight another day. You now have the lead in the game. Bull says absolutely not. You go for it That's every his time. Philosophy. I always go inside the five. For the, me, I always go. The analytics on the call say it's a coin flip. I take the points. What do you do? I, I'm, I'm a guy who likes to take the points as well because I just feel like you know as a quarterback. When you drive down the field, you've had some success in that opening drive. You've hit a few chunk plays. You get down there inside the tight red zone. The drive stalls. You lose a couple yards. It's fourth and three, and you don't get it. You go for it, you don't get it. It's it's kind of you know you, you kind of get deflated walking off the field saying, sure. "Damn, man, we, we didn't get we didn't get anything out of that drive, man. It, it feels bad." When you go down and you get three, you come off the sideline and you kind of feel like. Well, you know, I'd love to finish that drive with a touchdown, but we got three. We've shown we can move the ball against these guys. We're going to be able to get chunk plays in the passing game. Let's come back out on the second drive. And let's go get seven. So I, I like the feeling of walking off the field with some points in, uh, on the board. Uh, just, I just hate, I hate that feeling of coming off with uh, empty-handed, especially when you've had such a good drive like that. Tim, I, I, I get why some people would argue that side. What drives me nuts, though, and I, nobody's doing it here, I don't think, but what drives me nuts is that people will say, well, they would have won the game if they would have kicked the field goal. That's stupid. The whole game would have been different. First of all, the Falcons ended up starting that drive from the three-yard line or four-yard line, yeah. whatever it was. They scored a field goal on that drive. Maybe if they Browns had kicked the field goal and the Falcons they had kicked off and the Falcons would have had the ball at 25, maybe they would have scored a touchdown instead of a field goal. So, like, you never know how the game would have went from there. I get what you're saying. I understand why people – I know I'm in the minority opinion on this. A lot of the new younger coaches – like to go for it on fourth down all the time, especially inside the five-yard line, because the analytics generally favor it. In this, this case, is, it generally, coin flip. in this case, it was a coin flip. But I get it. And the old school mentality is to kick the field goal, especially on the Harbaugh, road. Harbaugh on the Ravens got burned on it yesterday too. Yeah, but they, but you you never point out when they do it, it works. And then they win because of it. Well, we never the, point that out in the because moment nobody, because nobody talks about it. No, like, because in a law, if you win, all the warts are hidden. Nobody comes back and looks at each. Every, you know, they all didn't those lose decisions. because of that either. Not the saying Bills they lost marched right down the field. They were marching down the field the second. They, and they did march down the yeah. field. Harbaugh even said afterwards, "Yeah, hindsight, you'd love to take the points there." I think the game is switched to this Madden style coaching where. <laughs> You go for it. You go for it. You and go it for works it. You go more for often it. than it doesn't. Otherwise, teams wouldn't do well, it. Well, I'm not sure about that. I think last year, the Chargers made some bonehead decisions in their final game of the regular season that cost them a trip to the playoffs. Again, you probably I've ignored seen... when it worked all season long. No, we, we had it worked all season. It worked against us. Let's log your honor. It worked against us when the Chargers I forget we got Tim here. Yeah. Tim. Sorry, Tim. Jeep brought this up earlier, and I want you to talk about it because obviously quarterback play is your – is your specialty. The quarterbacks that the Browns have played on way to a 2-2 two and two record, Baker, want, the fans there want him benched. Joe Flacco, he's not starting anymore. Mitch Trubisky, we won that wow. game. He's not he's starting, not starting anymore. anymore. Wow. Marcus Mariota. So those are the four that we've played that we're 2-2 two and two against. Here's the next seven. Herbert, the Patriots, that, we, got a, we got a break there. Yeah. That's a game yeah. now that they should win. After the Patriots, you get... The Ravens, the Bengals, you have a bye. By the way, the, right the Dolphins, the Bills, and the Buccaneers. Hmm. By the way, the Buccaneers are two and two. The Ravens are two and two. The Bengals, Bengals are two and two. Herbert's the hurt. The Chargers are two well, and two. Well, the Buccaneers are two and two, up. but you always have to look at how they're at two and two. They they're not playing the, well. Lost to the Chiefs played. and they lost to the Packers. The Chiefs just lost to the Colts the week before. Right. Well, the Browns have lost to the Jets and, and they've the lost to the Falcons. And the Packers don't look very good either. <laughs> you think Aaron Rodgers ain't gonna come in here and, and torch us? If no, play, not Tim, back to my okay. back no, to my saying. question. Yeah, um, they are playing better. This is a quarterback. This is a gauntlet that the Browns are facing. Um, what are you doing now if you're Kevin Stefanski and you're starting? Because 21 points hasn't been enough to win games. You're going to need to score a lot more than that when you're playing the quarterbacks that I just mentioned. How are they going to do that? 
Yeah, there's no question. They got to get some more points uh, out of the offense because you got to expect that the way the defense has been playing, you know, these first four weeks, you got to assume these quarterbacks are going to light up the scoreboard against these guys. So, but, you know, you get a help, you get hopefully Jadavion Clowney gets back. I'm not sure when he's supposed to be back. You get Miles back out there. Obviously, that's going to help and get some pass rush on these guys. But, you know, you're going to have to score some points. You got to get a little more production uh, out of the passing game. You know, I think um, Jacoby's played well, but, you know, he's, he's been very conservative also. He is what we all kind of thought he was going to be. He's that game manager type of guy uh, who's, who's very good at going to the right spot with the ball. But we've seen him in two-minute situations against the Jets, and we've seen him in a two-minute situation against the Falcons, and he's thrown two interceptions in those situations. But I'm not really surprised about that because that's not who he is. He's not an aggressive quarterback. He's not going to go out and push the ball down the field and take chances. He's very conservative. He's going to take the easy throw most of the time. So when he gets in those situations and the windows get a little tighter and you got to really push the ball down the field, we see him turning the football over. But, you know, he is who he is. I think he's doing a great job. Uh, he's staying within himself. Uh, but, you know, at some point when you start to play these really good quarterbacks, Jay, like you said, you're going to go out and have to go out and go. You're going to have to match them, you know, uh, drive for drive. You can assume they're going to score almost every time they touch the ball. So you got to go in with that mentality saying, I need touchdowns here. I got to go out and put points on the board if we're going to stay on the field with these guys. And field goals are, aren't going to cut it. Well, you better find some receivers. <sighs> not well, falling out of trees these days. I'm just, I'm going to look at it. So the Browns have eight games left against what I would consider good quarterbacks. That's if Tua plays. And if we do consider him a good quarterback, I don't know. So maybe it's seven. I would say seven. I don't, I don't think two is going to play, but I could be wrong. Bengals have five games left against good quarterbacks. Uh, the Ravens have one. We've had four games against subpar so quarterbacks. That is correct. So uh, Bengals have had three, actually four, because two got hurt in the first half. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Tim, Tim to your point, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing, <laughs> it's a guess, that the way you want to do this is ground control offense. Run the ball. Have, have drives that – take up seven and eight minutes, your best chance of beating all of these great quarterbacks is to make sure that they have a baseball hat on more than they have a football helmet on. Yeah, exactly. You know, you you want to re- you know you lean on your best players. You want to get shoved the ball even more. You know, keep that clock under control. Run the play clock down. Snap it with two or three seconds on the play clock every time. And then when you get the opportunity to take those shots in the passing game, get it going down the field. You know, some of these receivers are going to have to step up. Peoples Jones and and these guys are going to have to start making some plays because you know, like we saw this week or last week. Um, they're going to key on Amari Cooper now. You know, he's not, they're not going to let him go out there and get 10 catches every week. They're going to double him. They're going to make somebody else beat them. And until somebody steps up and does that, the passing game is going to struggle. I think Njoku's doing a really good job in the passing game. He's a walking mismatch out there. They need to start going to him even more. Uh, they've got him involved early in games the last few weeks. I think they need to continue to go to him. Um, and, you know, obviously, like you said, Jay, get, get that running game, lean on it very heavily and, uh, you know, control the clock a little bit. Try and keep those those dangerous quarterbacks on the sideline as much as possible. Hey, Tim, I say this and I've been saying it for a while. The, the balance on the wide receiver side is one side with a Mario Cooper running, uh, mm-hmm. doing all the pass catching. The other two guys are just becoming decoys, basically, until you get somebody out there that looks like they're a legitimate threat to at least balance it off. Uh, it's going to be a problem. But the other thing I want to ask you this because you made a, th- a statement about uh, Nick Chubb, he ran the ball 19 times yesterday. And Jacoby Brissett, you know, he's the game manager on the field game manager, right? He <laughs> should be the one to be able to push back to fans. Can you send this call in here? Like, no, let's not do that. Let's keep running Chubb because he's on the field. How many times do you think Nick Chubb, Chubb should have run that ball yesterday? 19 was, was his total for the entire game. You know, I would at least like to see, you know, five, six, seven more carries at, at, at minimum. You know, I think you give him the ball uh, as much as you possibly can. The guy's a workhorse, man. It seems like he doesn't get tired out there. He can take the hits. He's so strong and so physical. He's not going to be, you know, he's not going to be one of those guys that tires out in the fourth quarter. I think he's only going to get stronger. And you see guys, you know, they don't want to hit that dude after four quarters of trying to tackle him, man. His legs are so strong. You're going to see guys, you know, belling out now, you know, not not coming up and trying to make those tackles that you saw early in the game. But, um, you know, I would love to see him get it even more. I think every Browns fan would, you know, you can't give that guy the ball enough, get it to him in, in different ways. You know, you don't have to run it to it, run it every time you can throw that guy screen passes, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, just just get the ball in his hand as much as possible. All right, Tim. Sorry, it was a disappointing Monday. Um, it really puts a damper on everything, but hopefully they can right the ship and get ready for San Diego because, you um, they're they're going to be in for a they're going to they're going to get all they want uh, against the Chargers. 
I say San Diego, Los Angeles. Tim Couch, uh, <laughs> we'll talk to you next Monday. Thanks, brother. All right, thanks, guys. See you next thanks, week. See, I Chargers are three point favorite, by the way, right now. I need, I need one. Do we have one minute? I need one I minute. I think we do, Mike. We, okay? we have plenty. Yeah, I just got, I got to point something out. But all Jason, right, go. okay. So fourth quarter yesterday, right? That's what everyone's screaming about, right? Give the ball to Cre- to, Cre- to Nick Chubb more in the fourth quarter, yeah. which I agree. Like on the surface, Nick Chubb needs the ball more. We got to get the ball in Nick Chubb's hand. Here's fourth quarter. Nick Chubb first possession scores on a 28 yard touchdown. I guess he should have taken three or four carries to score instead of breaking off a 28 yard run. So the first drive ends in a, in a Chubb touchdown run. I don't run. care about that drive. I that's, care about the drives that didn't work. Okay, so that's the that's the drive where Hunt and Chubb were out there together because Hunt ran a, a fake end around. Right. They hand to Chubb. Yep. 28-yard touchdown. By the touchdown. way, th- when the two of them were on the field yesterday, good things happened. Yes. I just, counted twice uh, they were on the field together. Here's their next drive. Twice. Brissett completion to Harrison Bryant, three yards. Run to Nick Chubb, 10 yards. Run to Nick Chubb, three yards. Reset, short pass, middle, Kareem Hunt. Everybody wants Kareem to get the ball. Kareem gets the ball, 11 yards. So now it's first and 10 at midfield. Reset, incomplete to Amari Cooper. Okay. Throw well. on first down behind the sticks. Kareem Bucks don't work now. Second, t- second and 10, Kareem Hunt for four yards. Third down, Reset, incomplete. This is the one that you can pick at. Harrison Bryant, the incompletion of Harrison Bryant on third and six from the 44. Yep. That's the play. That, that but, but listen, the, that uh, that's play, one play. No for the rest of that that's one play. Yeah. And now it's fourth and six, and you have to punt. It only takes one play, though, Jay. But okay, but now here's the last possession. They get the ball back with 228. They have no timeouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't run the ball to Nick Chubb 15 times when you no. got to get down the field you with two and a half no, minutes and no timeouts. Yeah. But they're in that position because of the previous I, drive. I, I believe they went. That's I, where I they lost. They there's, the there's, there's one play out of everything I just went through. There's one play that I look at and go, yeah, I don't know about that. Well, I, I, I disagree right. with, I disagree with two plays. Throwing on first and ten. <laughs> to Amari Cooper. Yeah, I got no problem with it. Well, yeah, through to Amari Cooper. If you, Cooper. Don't, if you yeah. don't get it, now you're behind the sticks, second and ten. But runs are less effective. Generally, they just are. In general, it is smart to throw the ball on first down. With the Browns. Not if you're a run team. Yeah, with the Browns. They were averaging I, six I, yards a carry. I, just, I hear you. I just went through their entire I fourth quarter. But I can't call it a terrible play call to throw the ball to Mark Cooper on first down. So where is I, – I, So I in theory – He wasn't working yesterday and the run was. In theory, I agree with you guys. Nick Chubb needs the ball more. But where in that scenario on third and six, do you, do you run it to Nick Chubb on third and six instead no, of throw but, it to Harrison Bryant? It, 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 it's a domino effect. The yes. decision to throw on first, first down, down. – Put Changes behind, second put down and third down. It depends calls on now. who you're throwing to. If you're throwing to Amari we're Cooper, throwing, I don't we're know. Throwing to Amari Cooper, Amari Cooper was Amari blanking Cooper it all day. Be, I didn't see any separation covered. from him. They, but they, they, just, they made a point of it on TV. He wasn't going to beat it. They made they a point of it. Just put him on the sideline. They just put him on the sideline. No, use him as a decoy and give the ball that what's working. Are we really going to complain about throwing to our best receiver on first Yes, apparently we are. Because we got to make the point that Nick Chubb needs the ball more. Yeah, I agree with you. Because Nick Chubb was working well and Amari Cooper wasn't. I agree with you. So the game's in the balance. And let's go to what hasn't worked all day. And forget about what has. I agree yeah. with you in theory, I got a big problem but when you look through the play-by-play, the only one that I can really pick at and go, yeah, I don't know here, about that, here. was the Harrison I, Bryant. I, I, Jason, Gee, you, you have a problem with throwing Omar Cooper on first in that situation? Go ahead, Mikey. Go ahead, Mikey. Go ahead, Mikey. To, to Jason's point, and then I got some PFF yeah. grades I want to read you guys. Okay. Harrison Bryant was open on that third. He was. He was wide open. And it hit him in the hands. Wide open. I thought it hit him in the hands. He had to dive for it. He had to dive. He did. He had to leave his feet. A good throw there. The sticks move. I, I basically, I know that you say one play, one play. Well, the busted play on defense. One play, games swing on one play all the time. That's the league that we're in now. Sure, but my point is we're going to sit here and scream, oh, my God, Nick Chubb only got 19 carries. Well, he also scored a 28-yard touchdown know, in the fourth quarter. but that's like saying, boy, the, the secondary played so well yesterday except that no, one play. But well, show me. But show I'm, me. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Please, so I can address this. So, so, the, so, the to, so, to, so the totality of it is. Yes, in the fourth quarter, you could say, well, that was only the one thing. But sometimes what you do in the first half puts you behind the skis in the, in the fourth quarter. When he was on the goal line, <laughs> he ended the ball to Nick Chubb one time, and he did three straight passes. Well, the holding call they had to. Now, yeah. now, now and that's the play. And that's the play and that you can look at. That's the play. At. Now, you get seven there. Now, what you up? You go into the locker room. You're a and by game. the way, on that, different game. and on that hold, because if it works, everyone. It's like the pitcher complete. that loses one nothing and gave up a solo home run. No, but pitched but, a great game. But I, I asked Wyatt about that hold, and he said my helmet got shoved up, and my nose, my chin strap was over my nose, mm-hmm. and I got called for the hold on it. He yep. said I went looked at the official and said, "Sir, look at my helmet right now." Yep. So I, I, I just want to address your your, your one issue because I'm not a person that says you know there's one one cure for everything, right? But I will tell you this: there's an old saying in old school, right? 
bring uh, go to go to people that brought you to the party. Mm -hmm. Nick Chubb is bringing you to the party, right? So you don't go away from him. Well, you know, but Brad, to that point, here's another one. This this organization loves analytics so much. Man, they love it. How about this? It was first and goal from the one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is Jacoby Brissett on quarterback sneaks? He can't. They can't stop him like on, nine, one, on one yard nine, 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 Six nine, for six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So he's never been stopped in his career. That's I've got an idea. Crazy. I've got a novel concept. You've got the Tom Brady of quarterback sneaks on your team. And you got two and really good guards that are getting a really good and push. And you've got a good line, and you've got running backs that can divert attention by going Agreed. in motion out oh, the flats. Agreed, but I'm, I'm sure sneaks. if we went through play-by-play -play of every team, there'd be people that'd be angry at that coach, too, for bad decisions. No, no, no. I didn't like that. I didn't like I, that. No, I, I I there's plenty that. of things to bait. And that's there's what you do in a loss. And by the way, right, you're not right, going right, to get a holding this. call on a quarterback sneak. Let me, let me tell you. So what you don't you don't run the risk of having first and goal from the let, eleven. Let me tell you what they tell you in the locker room, man. <laughs> People always say this all the time. One play don't cost you the game. Mm -mm. Yes, it does. Yes, the hell it does all, all the, the time. time. All the time. Because you, if you don't do, that's why they tell you do your job. And what I'm saying to people is this: the coaches have a responsibility too. They have a job. His job on the one yard line. And my coach always said, if we if we can't get a yard running the ball, we don't deserve to win. And they're and, averaging six. And we can't. We, they they chose to be cute. And sometimes cuteness comes back to you and bites you right in and the it's ass. Even, it's not even the fact that they threw, which I agree, they should just run it. But it was the rollout. Yeah, I, I know. Like, yeah, just, just go know. play action. Just go got, play action. By the way, you got to blame Brissett a little bit on that. You can't throw it away on that play. Can why he is, audible? Is why he, is he throwing the ball away? Is he allowed to audible? I, I, I get right up there and say hell no. no. Then, no, no go, by that, the way, that, is anybody? You know what I'm saying? That goes back on that. <laughs> hold on one second. Are you talking okay. about the hole? On the fourth? No, oh, no, the fourth down. When go back to that first possession that everybody wanted to kick a field goal on that fourth down play, because in fairness, they ran with Nick Chubb the play before and he lost two yards. Um, but it was fourth down and like two and a half at the four yard at the three and a half yard line, right? Yeah. On that play, Jacoby Brissett rolls out right, which I hated. Yeah. What? But Jacoby's got to take some blame. Why he throw it away? No, no, he, he, you're, you're definitely right. And he, he had, throw the ball away. He right. had the same same blunders guys, in the last possession. This is a great graphic, and I want to. You guys did such a good job. You built 50 graphics. Yeah, on that this was, is a huge mistake. I, I really want to focus in on this That's because it, it, it does sound like we're killing Stefanski and how, how, what. You know, I've said I think he is a great play caller. I think he is a great offensive mind. But to your point, know who you are. And lean on your strengths when the game is in the balance. That graphic right there yep. is exactly what I'm talking about. Inside the 10-yard line, you have to score touchdowns. Teams that do win, teams that don't lose. Three drives, 10 plays. Well, you wanted them to kick a field goal yards. on that first drive. But I still would. And I you still just would. said teams that score touchdowns yeah, win. But I'm taking and points. Now you want them to kick but the you, field goal. I'm taking points. I'm not getting zero. Right. I'm not getting zero. And, That's not an option. And, and zero in the red zone is not an yeah, option. Yeah, but if you go for it twice and get a touchdown, it's better than kicking two field goals. You're right. But. Zero in the red zone is just not and an option. And that's what he does. You can't do that's it. That's what he does. That, compute. That's he unbelievable. He doesn't understand You're averaging that. <laughs> .5 yards per play inside yeah. the 10. Yeah, that was, that was negative passes. five yards, by the way. Seven passes. Five no, it was ten yard, ten that, plays yeah. and five total yards. No, minus negative five. five. Negative oh, five. Minus five yards. The, whole, the holding penalty. Here's the thing. That shouldn't count. Boom. Why should it count? These are facts. They gained five yards and, and, lost and look yards. at the play calls. Seven now, hold on, now, hold on, three runs. This was this was uh, troubling to me. You're an analytics guy. You <laughs> yeah. have these numbers in front of you, but yeah. you already know but, what the odds are. Inside yeah. the ten yard line is an awfully big range because you're going to call plays differently at the nine than you are the one. I wholeheartedly agree with you. At the one yard line, just give it to Chubb. But at the same time, they did that. Jason. They went no huddle. On third and one, Jason, gave it to Chubby. Lost Jason, two yards. Back Jason, that Jason, well, six now you're fourth. Jason, now you're fourth and Why would you go no huddle Jason, though? That's it. I agree. That's it. Why yeah, would you, know, you know, rush that play? Why would you like do that? that? And they, you want to be the smartest guy in the room. And they have. You want to be well, Andy Reid, but you're not. No, no, why that's not you, fair. If you know you're going to go for it on fourth. Yeah. Why are you no huddling on third? Get the right play in and do it because right. Because clearly, obviously, they saw something or they want they didn't want the Falcons to no, change no, personnel no, or no, whatever. No, no. I agree. No, I didn't no. like it because they're not a no, no huddle no. team. It's no, no. They don't I, do I must, it very I must, often. I must interject. No, they thought they saw something. Well, and what they saw, they didn't see. No, the Falcons. <laughs> no, to Jason's point, though, if you want run personnel on the field, 
you or you you don't want to give them a chance to change up their personnel. Right. That, that, then no. just go. But, but here, I'm but, not, but I'm that's not, gimmicky. I have the work. You're also rushing yourself. The, not necessarily. I have the workhorse behind me. Because you don't think it. And, they gave, and they gave it to him. And they gave it to him. It's gimmicky. I don't know. It's gimmicky. third and one, and they gave it to their the best time. player. Are they? Ten, like they're, they're not. They did exactly what we're screaming for them to do. It was third and one, and they gave it to Nick Chubb. How many? It didn't work. Watch this. Watch this. It didn't work. This is the this is the way it usually works. Yeah. I'm better than you up front. Yes. I'm better than you in the backfield. Yes. I'm not rushing. You know what? I'm gonna get up here and That's I'm gonna what run. Atlanta said in the I'm fourth gonna quarter. get right here and you're gonna get this work. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. The nope. Browns don't got that. Mentality. That's what Atlanta said in the fourth quarter. That's what Atlanta said. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? That's not, guess what, guess what, what that's not on. It's not on the freaking that sheet. That ain't on the sheet. It ain't on the freaking sheet. It ain't the statistics. Guys, it every, team, the every coach has a sheet. Calm down with the, with the nah, sheet. What, 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 nah. what, 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 every team has a sheet. The game, what, what, the, game, what, the game is not won on sheets, my friend. It's, it's, it's every about, coach game, let me tell, uses let me, a sheet. Let me, let me tell you something. Every coach. Let me tell you where the game is won, my friend. Right yeah. here. That's this it. is where it is won. Ah, right that's here. It. This is it. They, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is the separator. This is the separator. This is a fact. So when the Falcons lose by 30 next week, did they lose their no, heart? No, 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 they just had more heart than the Browns that week. Okay. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, because the, I always say, it, you can, this is not refutable. The Falcons threw that sheet, and you know what, in Lake Michigan, you know what they said? No, they didn't. They looked out there and saw no Miles Garrett, no Jadavion Clowney, no Taven Bryant, and said, we're going to run it right up there. Well, they didn't the first three quarters. They didn't the first three quarters. They found the cheat code in the fourth quarter, and then they said, we're going to run it right up there. And you know what they did? And they threw it 19 times the whole game. Right. They were throwing it that much. Who? The Falcons. The Falcons threw it 19 times the whole game. I want Jacoby Brissett throwing in 19. Agreed. And, but Bull, when they yeah. after the pick, I don't. I think he may have one throw, and that was the forty-three yard busted coverage. Yeah, yeah. they they realized I've got Mariota, and it is what it is. We're going to run it. We're not going to let him throw the ball anymore. We're just going to run it. So they changed their game plan because in the fourth quarter, when the game was decided, they had a ten-play, seventy-five-yard drive, all runs. The next drive, seventy-three yards, yeah. field goal, seven plays. Ran it right down the Agreed. Browns. And the, the Browns should have done more. They, they didn't getting, have to they run were, it on every were single play. That's front. an anomaly. I, Let's be honest. No Anthony anomaly, Walker, no Jadavian Clowney, no But it Miles is what Garrett, it is. You can't no make Taven excuses Bryant. for guys that aren't there. I, I hear, yes, that's Can we talk true. about Miles Garrett for a second? should have ran I thought it your, your yeah. column was yeah. tremendous, first of all. Read it if you haven't. But there was we had a chat discussion going on that was very very interesting and i flipped on it i know you did yeah, because you did. when i read this i go wait a minute yep. this isn't what he was saying yep. on our personal you're exactly text. right you're exactly right and so i wanted so to bring everybody up to speed mike polk sent the text to the group is it now time that we can take shots at miles garrett for being a fool yeah he let his team down he said when the quarterback was out at the beginning of the year defense has to step step up and save the day. Yep. And then he does something through his own foolishness off the field that makes him unavailable. So Mike's question to the group was, Kit, is he fair fodder now? Can we take shots at him for at least being yeah. foolish? Glad he's okay. That's wonderful. But this isn't a this is a pattern of bad behavior. A pattern of bad behavior. Or bad decisions, I would say. Yeah. No, immature. Yeah. I would call it immature is decision making. It's bad right. Which I have as well. I listen, I I told I said in the group, I've I had Two speeding tickets this year. And that's why I didn't want to come down on him at first. But, but the question in the group was, and I thought it was kind of 50 50. There were guys that were saying, well, wait a minute. A lot of people speed. We can't beat them up. I what thought about- I was the only one that's saying it was fair to criticize them. No, I was too. Oh, okay. I yeah, said, look, yeah. you know, did he make a mistake? Yes. Is it a mistake that we all make from time to time? Yes. My problem is he's made that mistake seven times in three years. Yeah. And that we know of. That we know of. How yeah. many times do you think the cop came up to the car and said, hey, <laughs> Miles Garrett, what's it? Hey, slow it down. Slow Miles. down, buddy. How many times do you think he's been pulled over in the last three years if he's been written seven times? He's Miles Garrett. He's been let off, probably just a guess. Or how many? Probably more times he's been let off. Or how and many? That, by the way, yeah. The, the the cop that lets him off might be the cop that let him off that let Miles do think I can do anything. Miles, your life is on the line here. People die every day from reckless yeah. driving. I think it was. Um, I heard a couple of different announcers yesterday say politely, Miles, slow it down, slow down. Sometimes, maybe this was the best thing that could ever happen yeah. to Miles Garrett, who will now hopefully drive the speed limit the rest of his life and never have to worry about killing someone or himself right. in a car accident. 
But I want you to go into what you wrote, and I'm really curious to know why you changed your mind. Because I struggled with this because the, I, I said in the, ch in the chat, I, am, I can be many things. I have many flaws. I try really hard to never be a hypocrite. I never want to be, I never want to wag a finger at someone else for stuff I've done myself. Right. I drive really fast. I have a lot of speeding tickets. I do too, but I don't have a speeding ticket. <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> but to me, it was more of a totality. The more I thought about it, and, and it wasn't just our group was chat. It the, was it the loss that made you rethink a it? A lot of it. That's what I wanted to A lot to of it. You. Because the more that I thought about it, and I thought Mike made some good points, and in talking to just other people and having other random conversations about it, it was really more of the totality of the maturity of Miles Garrett. And I know some people may roll their eyes and say, this is really stupid. Last year on Halloween, he had the, the cape with all like the, the tombstones of all the quarterbacks and everything. He was having fun with it going into the game. Browns lost that game to the Steelers. He wore the cape. He wore a Halloween costume into the media room to do post game. And I thought, bad luck. How childish is that? You lost the game. If you win the game, come in and have fun with it. You lost the game. And then this year, but to, to criticize the fans after the, the loss to the Jets and say that they shouldn't be booing, that's nonsense. That's immaturity emerging and showing out. And now to have this on top of that, so it was more the totality of it. It's not just speeding. It's just the immaturity of the whole thing. Miles has some growing up to do. And I say that as somebody who really likes Miles. I've I had love some Miles good Gary. conversations with him. I went to bat for him after the helmet swing. I defended him. I went and looked for the audio from uh, from the field like I spent a couple of weeks trying to find audio or evidence of audio emails of the NFL trying to bury the audio to see if he was telling the truth so I've gone to bat for him multiple times but I'm to the point now where it's like man you got to grow up you, you've got to grow up this can't keep happening and if I got a ticket for driving over 100 miles an hour I probably would slow down I probably wouldn't drive as fast as so, as two, as so one day, so two is now now in consecutive days threatening yeah and if by the way, this there was an innocent person in the passenger yeah, yeah, seat. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, just to clear, clarify, he wasn't driving 100 this day. We don't know. 65 and a 45, according yeah. to police. Yeah, according yeah. To that's police, an estimation. They say 65. Yeah. So 65 certainly isn't 100, but Zach Jackson lives sort of out there, our Browns rider, and he said, listen, you, you, these are roads you do not want to be I've talked to people that travel on. these roads on a regular basis, yeah. and they said 65 on that road is, is entirely too fast. Yes. He was cited for reckless. Yes. And, and, and it is reckless. It's yeah. a curvy road. It's got a lot of ups and downs. Ups and downs. Anytime, you wreck, on, anytime you wreck, you're going to have reckless stop or failure uh, to control. But, yes, people who drive those roads consistently say – no way should anyone be doing 65. By the way, the road. highway speed limit should be higher than 60, though. So let, let me, let me, not on that road. Oh, so no, we, highway, highway. Highway, you're right. Yeah. But on that particular road, yeah. 45 so, is plenty. So let me say, let me say this, because I'm, I'm, I'm listening to your point, I'm listening to your point, and, and there's nothing I, I can agree with more that, obviously, a vehicle is a very dangerous instrument if used the wrong way. Right? It's a deadly and, weapon and if used so, the wrong and way. So, and so you talk about the maturity of maturation of a person. Right, and it comes at different times and places and instances for different people. Right, I don't think anybody among here sitting at this at this at this booth hadn't hadn't been in a speeding behind a car at some point. I'm 46 and I still huh. drive too fast. So, I freely and so, admit and it. So we sit here, we sit here, and I hope this is a life lesson to him. I do too. I, 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 I swear, I hope it's a life lesson to him because it could have went all bad. It's already bad. It could have went really, really bad. But I will tell you this. Money, power, mm -hmm. the ability to buy fast cars is a curse. And fame. Uh, and fame of young people. It, the effort, it, it, for every cop that gave him his license back and told him to slow down, has been, they gave right? him more the, the power. The lack of accountability. To enable himself. And we're just guessing. Here, here. We have to say, we're just I, guessing here, that that I, happened, I'm, but it's a pretty fair I, I'm guess. Not gonna be a, I'm not going to be a hypocrite on this thing, right? I'm going to tell you, I like, okay, so I'm, I'm going to argue. I'm going back to my Chicago days. I'm gonna argue with we have me and Jordan having fun in practice one day, right? I got a 944 per Porsche Turbo that had been souped up. He got a 911. We arguing at the practice about whose car was faster. And so what we said, we're 22. Let's go settle it. We said we're gonna settle this. Let me tell you how we settled it. We take six teammates. So we're gonna go on the highway on in Chicago, <laughs> right? Two get behind us. You block the back of the highway, right? Oh my Two go ahead. <laughs> Oh, Lock it up front. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna stretch this thing out, right? For a thousand, not for a thousand dollars. We'll stretch this thing out, right? And so 
I mean, we we had to be well over 100 on this thing, right? Sure. And I'm in the 100. I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> like, this is this Who is, won the race. Well, he won. <laughs> I like, listen, I got to speed limit was too fast. Yeah. I was like, it's too fast here. I, you know, so I said, this is this is not a, a an occurrence that is that is an anomaly. No, what happens? It's, it's out. That's there. Exactly, young people. The, the, that's exactly money. how Bobby Phils died. The, the question. That's exactly the, how yeah, Bobby Phils died. And Bobby used to sit in my house, right? And he would buy car parts from me all the time, right? So this thing is, you have to hope that this just this instance changes the outlook for him. I right? pray it does. I'm, I'm, I'll give you, and this is there. I think this is one of the most serious <laughs> things that I probably ever said. <clears throat> when I, you know, I go to a party school. I went to OU, um, and when you at OU, I mean, when you party, you party, and that means alcohol. That means drugs. I'm not gonna tell you what exact ones was it because there was a lot of them. And I'm gonna tell you something. I always felt, uh, I always felt a little strange because, you know, the, the drugs and alcohol really never got to me. You know, I would be like, man, I, I don't know what the, am I supposed to be, this supposed to feel good or is this supposed to be great? It would never hit me like that. I never, and they always tell you, if you listen to anybody with addiction, they said all it takes is the one to find it. And that's what you hooked on. And I thank God that I never found it. But I'm gonna tell you what, there was, there was good friends around me that found it quick. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool, we, 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 we good, we'll get out of here. I'm, I'm one year out of school, we good. We, this, we've always done this, we good. Mm -hmm. Until my buddy called me and said, hey, you know, um, you know, so-and-so died. And I said, what? I said, yeah, he, he died, he overdosed, accidental. And I felt horrible because I felt I enabled it mm -hmm. because it didn't hit me like that. Oh, well, we could do that. Then after he died, three of my friends went to rehab. Mm. Three, in and out. One of them still in and out in rehab. <clears throat> so all you gotta do is learn that it only take one time, bro. One time. You take one time, one ask time. Teddy Pendergrass. One time. One time <clears throat> for you to do something and, and it changed your life forever. I'm just, we all lucky that. The John Rogers, the, the yeah. young draft pick yeah. for the Browns. The yeah. stupid stuff that Len you bias. do, Len you bias. just, you just the grace of God, you ain't out of here. You just got, you got lucky. And so my thought process is, the worst thing when they came to my mind that said, he, he, he's, it's not life threatening. Mm -mm. But be, being paralyzed from the waist down, that may not consider losing your leg, Look, me losing you. your arm, yeah. your ability to do what you love to do. And I don't never want to see nobody confined to a chair, nope. confined to a bed, confined to a room, and people having to clean and feed you because you wanted to just drive fast. Right. Right. Think about that. Miles, man. Miles Garrett has parents in Texas, right? Yeah. And so I will just tell you, I'll just tell you this, Miles. The good Lord has given you a second chance. That's yep. exactly right. He's yep. given you a second Don't waste chance. it. Do not waste it. Don't waste right? it. And then you, you take. And this isn't about football you, you, either. No, I, no, I don't, no, I, I don't you, care no, at no, all no, about no, the you, football. But to all of you, to all of your points, really, if we're be, this is not shouldn't just be a lesson for Miles. It should be a lesson. Everybody, for everybody. 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 everybody, right? The, we, the three well, of us already said we right, drive too fast. Drive fast. People, how many times are you on uh, at a stop a stop sign? Stop yep. light, you see people mm -hmm. on their phones. Yeah, yeah. Look at it. Everybody's on their Hell, phones. Hell, going 65 and it's not on the just highway, young people. I look over at people, they're on their phones. It's not just young people. No, it's not. And people not. are, I mean, it, we're, we're everybody. And and it, what drives me nuts is when people will say, well, I'm not going to blame Miles Garrett because I drive fast. Well, instead of it, instead of saying that, say, you know what? Miles Garrett was wrong, and I'm wrong, and too. I'm wrong, and I'm right. tripping, Instead so. of saying, I'm not going to say anything about right. Miles Garrett because I tripping. do it. Well, but, and this is about, it's like whenever somebody commit, like, uh, does something, and then we say, well, their guy did it, too. Or whenever a politician does something crappy, well, their guy does it, too. Maybe we should all say, whether it's all these things, say, instead of trying to match the what the other guy yeah, yeah. does that's crappy yeah, that's yeah. maybe we all need to kind of that's say, what about is yeah. just and, take take and, accountability and, I, and I, yeah. I readily I've, I've had this conversation on multiple levels with different people I've constantly said I'm not one to talk I have two speeding tickets this year yeah. I drive fast I don't drive reckless I know if you say I well, don't fast is I don't reckless. drive reckless I'm not weaving in and out of traffic and I'm not going on country roads with a with a high speed no, vehicle. Right. But there have been times but, where but I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm going over, too fast yeah, here. And that's where I catch myself too. That it, it's wrong. Yeah. It doesn't matter. My my house is made of glass. I'm not throwing stones. All I'm saying is 
I wish for somebody who has everything, think of the gifts that God has given this man. He has everything yeah. in his hand. I don't want to see him throw it away because he had a desire to and drive be, fast. And before we go to Mikey, I, I just want to make one point, and, and I think this is a fair, fair criticism and fair shot you can say. When you're in a team sport, you recognize when you let your people down. When we out here yeah. in July, yeah. sweating it out here, trying to get to the top of the mountain, you let us down. You let you let your, you let him down. Let, you let, you let, let, let his you team let, down. You let yeah. your friends down. Yeah. You did. You let your friends down. Now you got to make amends for it, right? And the men's for it is just here, staying on the straight and narrow. And when you can come back, come back at the, at the highest level you can. But be thankful mm. that we're not at your funeral here. Mm. Mm. That's exactly right. My son said to me the other day, Daddy, you're driving too fast. That got to open my eyes. From the mouths mm. of babes. <laughs> yep. All right, Mikey. Got two things we got to do. First off, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. We got a two minute warning show. Four weeks in a row, it's come down to the wire. It's been a lot of fun. Every week, it's decided while you it's, guys are on the air. Down. It's, it's yeah, unbelievable. Awesome. Plus all our videos. All plus our videos. my podcast is via the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. So subscribe and hit the bell so you get the alerts. All right, so PFF just released their game grades from Sunday. Let's start with the offense. Who do you guys think is the highest graded Brown on offense? I mean, Joe. Nick Chubb is the easy answer, yeah, but he's, maybe he's, one I, of the linemen. Nick line. Chubb's number four. Where's Betonio? He gave up a Tied sack. with Chubb for fourth. Okay. Um, Teller had David a couple Bell. of kind of – David huh? Bell. <laughs> I'm throwing those grades right out of the David Bell. I, don't, I, don't, I know had, a lot of people that say, use those like their Bible. I'm sorry. What, how, many, how many touches did he get? He, how many he, had, he had one Bell good catch. Snaps. He huh? had one good catch down the field that I remember. He did. How many yeah. So I'm going to grade him out highest out of everybody. At, PFS, trash. So snaps, trash. David Bell had an 84. Conklin was second with the 77. Wills, that uh, Jedrick Willis was 76.1. Chubb and Batonio both 72.4. Wills had a couple nice blocks down. Oh, they pulled him on a yeah, couple times. Yeah, I noticed yeah. they were pulling him. Yeah. I've noticed other teams in the NFL are doing the same thing. So yeah. it's, it's He's kind a of a much trend. better run blocker than He Bell. is a I, very good run blocker. McNuggets, yeah, right. how many snaps did he have? Who? Bell? Bell 19. played 19 snaps. I, I, they got to have a snap limit. Oh, like, yeah. 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 That's, that's, like, that's like that's like going three for three yeah. Yeah. and getting hurt and you win the batting title. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know, know who I, the lowest graded offensive player was? Jacoby Brissett, Amari no. Cooper. Cooper, Amari Cooper. Well, he had four targets in one catch and just there was no separation. All None. day. There was oh, no could, separation. He could have shaked the one, dude. No, he was on him like <laughs> a blanket. Like anything else, PFF has its flaws. I think it is valuable for certain positions more than others. I think it's good with offensive linemen. And I think it's good players. for linemen, too. Well, I, here's, I let my eyes tell receivers. me who plays a great Here, Here's the defense here. side is where it gets interesting. Okay. So Denzel Ward had a 86.7 grade. I very he high, well. Probably the highest, highest yeah. of the season. Yeah, he, he looked like Denzel Ward yeah, again. He did. No one else graded out above a 70 on the team. Okay, that's uh, a real And here's the most, the most uh, eye-opening it. thing. Jordan Elliott... A 27.8 grade. Oh, wow. We thought he played well. I thought he played well. <laughs> Jacob Phillips, who I also thought played halfway decent, 27.3. Man, isn't it, is it, is it funny that the basketball, me, uh, the basketball player can see it? The basketball player can see it. What did Delpit? What did Delpit get? These. Delpit was third. He was Delpit Delpit played well. I thought, except that one play guy. where he got dragged 15 yards. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I actually line. thought he made some nice plays. In, I thought in he played well on the back end. Yeah. And lastly, Tommy Togiai, who stepped in for Taven Bryant. Graded out the absolute lowest at a 24.8. Yeah. So there are two starting so defensive yeah. tackles I'm combined. Not gonna talk, I'm not going to talk about less than It's I'm been so bad on yeah. the yeah. defense. I'm going to forget the, you know, whatever, the play yeah. calling. And if we, it is who it is. We have Brissette. Yeah, yeah. I just, based on this defense alone, they're under 500 this year. At, they're not making the playoffs. The, but we said that at the start of the year, I think. Yeah. You know, like, I, I said I thought they'd be like 8 and 9. I nine picked them to go somewhere. 9 and 8 this So year. that's why yeah. I'm not like outraged. I had 9 and 8 too, but now after just looking I and seeing what's left. the Browns would finish in third place. I still think they're probably going to finish in third well, place. Well, if you finish in third, though, in the no, – like, third's awful. Well, I, here, I mean, here. you have – like I, Nobody's here to finish into, in third. My thought going into the season was you have one of the worst starting quarterbacks in the league who actually has played better than I thought. But going into the season, I was like, we have one of the worst starting quarterbacks for two-thirds of the season. 
Yeah. I can't have my expectations be that high. I thought it's possible they could do better, but and and but if they had, we said it all along. If they were going to do better, they had to go at least three and one, if not four and zero. Oh, and they didn't do that. So, Bull, so, Bull, so, Bull, I think that you're you're spot on. Yeah. You're, I think you're spot on with yeah. your, your analysis. Here, here's where my problem comes in at, right? With all those flaws that you said and but things yeah. you think, yeah. we had a chance to be much better than this. Sure did. And that is reliably solely on the execution of the game plan because we have a little room margin of error. This is it. It's real teeny tiny. Yeah. Right? Well, the NFL and is very. This thin. is this is it. And so, even with all that being said, we could have easily won at least one more game and maybe but two. But they could have easily lost one or two. Yeah, more but games I'm saying, too. but here, but that's the that's NFL. That's the NFL. You can't no, but say two and two yeah. because that's who they that's are. That's who they, they are. are. They should have won the Jets game. They should have lost the Panthers game. And I'll, everything else, you thank, know, I think they look good. I mean, the way Steelers. they should have won the Panthers game because they were up big, and then they should have lost it because but, they, but, yeah, so they could have, they could have, and should have lost it. Can, but they didn't. Can somebody yeah. tell me? So can somebody just straight up yeah. tell me why Joe was still employed? That I don't. I mean, give oh, me one good reason. I think well, the well, because they were terrific. Season, that's exactly that's it. Why. They were terrific for the second half of last season. So that's what you had coming in. Yeah, it's been four games. Most I, of them have not been very good. I defensively. would say I agree. maybe don't they don't feel like there's another guy on the defensive staff that could. Yeah, fix what are that? you going to do at this point? What are you going to do at this point? Maybe at the if it doesn't improve, I would think maybe at the bye week he gets Here's fired. Here's what the real tragedy of all of this, guys. And yeah. You know this in the NFL, it's a, it's a series, it's a cycle of the window being completely closed, and then it goes up. And then it gets to the top and it's open and it doesn't stay at the top. No, nope. it immediately starts yeah. to come back down. Yeah, the real shame of this is waste. We're going to waste Nick Chubb waste and Miles Garrett. And we've seen one playoff yeah. win. But, guards, but guys, yeah, your I would line. argue that the window is going to reopen because for the no. starting week 12 for the first time in modern franchise history, you have a very good quarterback. And do you However, trust? And do you trust what, what we're going to do with that quarterback? Yes. Full heartedly, yes, but, but here's I the do. problem, 100%. guys. Yes, the window opening and then closing, the salary cap situation isn't going to change. It's a nightmare moving forward. It is. No, they just and there's going to be a lot of talent that is yeah. currently on this roster that will not be here next year because they'll be cap casualties. I don't know that it's next year. I, I think no. it's the year. No, That's next why, year they're thirty million over the cap. But they have fifty million in cap space. They're rolling over this year. They right, do. Right. So, but, so the next year, I think they'll be okay. It's the year after where there's going to be some really difficult decisions they yeah. have to make. Right. I mean, but, it's not going to get any why, easier. But that's why for the first time. In, and by the way, in, Nick Chubb then is two seasons older. Right. Mm -hmm. And the but, lifespan of a running back. Luckily, they're only using him 18 or 19 yeah, years. Yeah, he should be able to play 25 <laughs> years the way they're using him. Like the good that. news is. Hey, I like that. Here's the thing. thing. I like it's that. It's going to come down. Once you get the salary cap break. problem, <laughs> which Jason's right, in two years, although the cap is going to go way it up. It is going to go up. Way up. Yeah. I bet you it goes up next year even more than they expect because these new TV contracts The Amazon money is going to Hell, You're on. Yeah. COVID's now in the back, in the rear view. But now it's up. Once you are, the Browns have never been in this place where they've had to worry about the cap because they've never had any talent. No, right. Know. Since cap's been a factor. So, that's why they can roll 50 million. That's over. why they can roll 50 that's million. Exactly right. But now what we're going to find out is how good is Andrew Berry because the only way to keep that window open, especially when you have a great quarterback and you're spending a lot of money, is to draft. And, and de develop. And, and develop. So Draft and develop. I know this is a silly game yeah. to play, but we're filling time, and that's what we do. Seven games left before the starter comes back, yeah. before Deshaun Watson steps on the field. Yeah. Based on the body of work that you've seen so far, yeah. you're sitting at two and two, you know what the schedule is, you know the quarterbacks that we're going to face over the next seven games. Yes. Where are they when Deshaun Watson comes back? My guess right now is they're five and six. That's exactly where I'm at, five and six. Red. I can't disagree. No, I mean, not from what I'm seeing. I can't. It, it, I mean, if, if nothing changes, if, if the defense, nothing, if nothing changes, the good news is when we all agree on something, which is very rare, it yeah. never happens. always wrong. That's yeah. right. Right. Yeah. I hope it's Hopefully wrong it's the worse. other way <laughs> <laughs> because I see them being five and six yeah, too. Five, yeah. Now you got to play each game out and this yeah. is really a, a the exercise defense in, ultimately in through four weeks is the big disappointment here. Yes, they better. They've got to get markedly. There's better. fair criticism of Stefanski in this current game and at times throughout his career, just like most other coaches. Right. But ultimately, the offense has been better than I would have expected. The defense has been significantly worse. Yes. Absolutely yeah. dead on. The, the defense has been a disaster. And I, but yeah. make Kevin give up the play calling because that'll fix everything. And, well, can I say this? <laughs> it will. It's not, getting past, it's not getting past the fan base. There was a huge contingent of people in Atlanta for the Browns yesterday. Huge. Yeah. Huge. yeah, no, yeah. Right. I didn't and feel they, like and a they, they left. They were steamy. 
right? Because we've McNuggets seen this movie over and over again. We've to take again. care of. Well, we got. We're going to pivot, and we're going to talk about the team that should be getting one hundred percent of our attention. Which ah. until Period. today has about the been the case on my podcast. I've been talking Guardians for two weeks. Mostly. The team th- that has heart. Yes. That plays every single play that hard. They're going to the playoffs. The Guardians are. We're going to do the last half hour on the yeah. show with the Guardians. Unfortunately, I got to go. Purge ourselves of this Browns madness. Go ahead, McNuggets. All right, before we end up our Browns conversation, yeah. we do have to tell you what the internet is saying about Kevin Stefanski's decision to go for it on fourth down. And whenever we ask the internet a question, it's brought to us by our favorites Aww. at PCC Airfoils. Looking for a job with career advancement and great benefits? PCC Airfoils is a leading manufacturer in Northeast oh. Ohio. All locations of PCC Airfoils in Eastlake, Mentor, Wycliffe, and Minerva are hiring for all positions starting at $18 and up, plus get full benefit packages, paid time off, and signing bonuses. You can apply online at precast.com slash careers to learn more. Keep it moving. Keep He's got nothing moving. today. I got nothing uh, yeah, both, and both has to run in five minutes, so we're yeah. going to run through these real quick. So let's yeah. take a What do you got, tea time? Steve? I got no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I got to go to my gun school. Jason checked out one time mid-show. Got out of the middle time, of the show. So. I got to take time. Like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm I'm out. Me, I don't leave for golf. It's for my son's school. Hey, listen, the last time my mom had to come to school, it was not a good look. So we asked the internet what was the main topic of discussion after the game. Should the Browns have gone forward on fourth and go on the first drive or kicked the chip shot field goal? We got a mere period of answers very mixed bag let's take would you say that there was a tendency one way or the other was it was pretty split by the way really? split. Jason, okay. the, the reason you know you're wrong about kicking the field goal to i'm never goal, wrong but you're usually ahead. right okay i i admit you're one of the smartest sports guys in town but here's how you know you're wrong tony grossi thought they should have kicked the field goal oh stop be nice all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's, oh, let's, so this is from petty nice. Petty Le Bull. <laughs> Hindsight is 2020, yeah. but I always take the points, especially on the road with your entire defensive line. This whole on the goes. road thing is so dumb. Yeah, no, it's points not. on the road are, are, are easy to come <laughs> by. Both. It wasn't even a road game. Nobody was cheering for Atlanta. It was yes, a they were. It was like eight Evan Falcons says fans. it was the right call. Go for seven Atlanta, to start the on the road. Atlanta, top five worst fan bases in America. If your defense even plays slightly competent, that call is irrelevant. It's funny that people were using Correct. the same argument for both sides. He says, I know oh, they for are. seven on the road, we had on I don't the road, think you road home three. Yeah. That's yeah. Dumb. Which means there's no consensus is really what it goes. Let's see the next one, Anthony. Three is better than nothing. Johnny 8-Ball says, don't draft a kicker in the fourth round if you're not going to use him. That's you're on the road, too. take the points. You can especially. Congratul- Sorry, Mike. I, my bad. I'm cutting you You can off. especially in a ball control type of game. Uh, just congratulations to Johnny 8-Ball. That's a st- as dumb a tweet as I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the, the quality of the kicker in that case is irrelevant. Every kicker is going to probably make that kick from inside the pot. We got two more. This is always take points on uh, Presentation, the that's road. my favorite. Yeah. yeah. I like, yeah. Just the way, he, the way he put it. And You're it's a double, good time. And it's double space. It's and last one. Right call, wrong play call. You so can look at the, it that way, too. The internet echoes exactly what we have argued about look for the last Hunt's 90 minutes. So. His avatar yeah. is excellent. Okay. Um, Kobe yeah. Bichette, don't throw it away. Why did he throw it away? What a uh, I think an even bigger mistake was the fourth and one on the 29 year Oh, that's a no-brainer. I hope they never do that He's again. He's made every fourth and one in his career, Jacoby Brissett. Oh, okay. Then when it's first and goal from the one, do it four times. You got a touchdown. I'm not arguing. Okay. <laughs> All right, are we going to break now? We do have to break. Bulls going. I got to go. G. I'm Bush is stepping he- out. G. Bush is stepping out for a minute because we've got two folks from the Guardians in. There they are. Uh-oh. Bob DiBiasio, Neil Weiser. They're going to join us on the program, and we're going to talk Guardians playoffs, tickets, which I understand. Are there tickets left? There's a few left. Okay, so they're, they're not many if there are because when I checked, it was, it was very, very sparse. Um, this is about to be a Guardians town, whether you people like it or not. We're going to talk Guardians. Last half hour of the show. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. See you, Bull. Hi, my name is Jay Crawford. I'm a lifelong Cleveland sports fan. My favorite all-time Cleveland sports moment, you're not going to believe this, it was Rajay Davis's home run in Game 7 that tied the score. My favorite Cleveland sports moment would have to be the Kyrie Irving 2016 shot. It's the only time that I've ever cried over any sport event. And my ultimate Cleveland memory is when the Cavs won the championship and the day of the parade. It was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life. We face challenges every day, some bigger than others, and we never know what's around the corner. Through the highs and the lows, whatever we face, we face it together. Each morning on go, we are here with the facts 
because what impacts you impacts all of us. And understanding those facts helps us to make informed decisions for our families, our communities, and our future. We are here for you every step of the way. Go weekday mornings, 4.30 to 7 a.m. What matters most to me is family. Sometimes you don't realize how important it is until you're away from them. What matters most to Jay? Uh, his family. He is a big family man. What matters most to me? My family, my safety, your safety. I think the thing that most impresses me about Betsy is her versatility. Give her any assignment that involves going in front of a television camera and she's going to knock it out of the park. What's new with Betsy and Jay? Weekdays at 5 on 3. Hey, it's Adam the Bull for the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, and I'll tell you what I think of when I think of Cleveland sports. It's that everybody loves it. I've been to other parts of the country, and there's people that love sports and people that don't care. But in Cleveland, everybody cares even a little bit from every walk of life, and that's what makes this city special. Whether it's football, baseball, or basketball, it doesn't matter. The people of Cleveland and Northeast Ohio love their teams like nowhere else in the country. I gotta get it. Oh, what a scene. <laughs> All right, it is time to talk about the, the team in town that everybody tends to forget about until October. <laughs> the Cleveland Guardians have been absolutely, they've captured our hearts. Um, for those that pay attention to baseball only in October, it's, it's that time. And we're pleased to have Bobby DiBiasio in and Neil Weiss, some of the, the, the brains behind this organization. <laughs> um, Guys, I'll start with you, Bobby. How, how much fun has this been? What's this run been like for you? Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable what these young kids, they've re-energized uh, Tito, that is for sure. If you think back to the context of it all, Tito came aboard in 2013. We had lost 92 games in 2012 with Manny Acta in his last year as, as our skipper. And Tito comes and all of a sudden there's instant credibility in the clubhouse and Major League Baseball for who we are and what he's been able to accomplish. Um, fifth time in the last six years that we play 162 games and we win 90 or more. Um, the second most wins in all of the American League since Tito arrived. Fourth most wins in all of baseball wow. since Tito has arrived. Um, That's remarkable. But this year, of all that, I, I say that because we've had winning here with Tito as our skipper. This year is special. This year with those kids and how they play. Um, who knew what the identity of this team was going to be when we broke camp? Remember all the holes in the outfield oh, when the season started? People say, you can't draft. Man, we talk in spring training. spring training. How can you draft pitchers and have this pitching ninja school where everybody's good, but we can't <laughs> find an outfield? Yeah. Now we got plenty of outfield. Yeah. Too many now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just been unbelievable. The, the chemistry, people who don't realize, you know this, yeah. being an athlete, chemistry matters, yes. mm -hmm. and especially in our sport. You're together 162 games daily drama of six months. You better get along with the people in that clubhouse. And Neil, and Neil I asked you a, a couple weeks ago, you're ahead of schedule here, right? Because I don't think anybody in this town thought we would be sitting here ready for a playoff run now, right? But you are not just inching across. I mean, you like one of the top teams out here that are playing at the right time, the right way. So talk about the, the, the this club being put together and being a, on a course ahead of schedule. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievably exciting. I, so when we talked, I thought a year or two years from now, we're going to be incredible. And talking to Journey and Chris Hettinetti and so on, it's like these so many exciting young guys. And then just every day, it's a little bit more of maybe the future is now, maybe the future is now, maybe the future is now. I, I've been, I mean, I'm 52. I'm not originally from Cleveland. I've been here for 10 years. I've never been so excited about a season in my life. Wow. Um, and this is, it's like every single day you show up and everybody's like, I want to come to the game. I want to come to the game. I want to see these guys play. Um, so I think we're going to be great next year and the year after. But right now we got this year, and man, it's exciting starting Friday. Yeah. Seventeen players yeah. made their major league debut, right? Has it gone 16. to eighteen? Sixteen. No, sixteen. Okay, sixteen. But, Sorry, I'm giving. But, you, yeah. I'm counting on somebody else coming yeah, in the yeah, next. Yeah. Probably. Probably. <laughs> well, both. Well, no, seven. Both. 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 Seventeen. Both. Seventeen. Number two. Yeah. Sorry, I, well, and by the way, sorry, I love Jason, that they hit right. back to back in the lineup yeah. yesterday. Yeah. The Canadian How baseball. Fun. The Canadian baseball head of fame. Uh, the guy that runs it, Scotty. 
um, text both Curtis and I and Jeremy Fido, our historian. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes, you got to get me everything from that game for <laughs> yeah. the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. With yeah, them bet. batting back to back in the lineup. Pretty fun. 17 guys making yeah. their major league debut. That's a recipe for 105 losses. Maybe 110. <laughs> Not 90 wins. <laughs> <laughs> 90 wins. That's insane. Well, it, it's really a testament to our coaching staff um, and the way Chris and Cherney and their whole group and the Travis Fryman. As a matter of fact, we were down talking to Tito before we came here, and there's a whole group of young athletes of ours. People don't realize we have 200, as you know, you know you've done many of stories on our system. 200 players play for us. Um, and there's young kids, Class A, et cetera, that Travis Fryman's one of our great player development coaches, brought them here so that they could walk around and see what our building's all about. So Touch the, the first goal. time oh, wow. they come up as a player, this isn't a whole brand new experience, that they've actually walked through the clubhouse, they sat in the player's lounge and had it's something It's incentive laden too. Exactly, that this is where you want to be and have a chance to say hi to Tito. And, and so, Bobby, is that and, new? I mean, is that new because, you know, and NBA they didn't do that. No, <laughs> that no. rolls you at the door. Exactly. <laughs> well, I tell people a couple of things. I started in this business in 1979, and as you know, the way it was in professional athletics, you rolled the ball out on the field, the court, court. wherever, mm -hmm. best guy's going to stay. Right, 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 right. It's not that way anymore. As a matter of fact, the, po the thing that has changed so dramatically, in my opinion, back there, beer and cigarettes was the post-game spread. <laughs> right, you right. Know, back in 79. Right, right, guys, right, guys right, used to right. burn heat in, yeah. the, in the dugouts. In yeah. the dugouts. They, they didn't have food. Right, they, right, right. You know, they, had, they went home and ate <laughs> after a game. Now it's chefs, strength and conditioning, sports science, all the things that will make every single one of our guys the best they can be. And that's, we don't cheat that process. Neil's in charge of helping put all of that through the software technology on the seven campuses that we have. Wow. That's multi-millions of dollars invested because that's how we can compete. And Neil works hand in hand with Chris and his crew to put all of that what we do sports science-wise and technology, again, in all the seven campuses, which are the four minor league teams, the Dominican Academy, mm -hmm. Goodyear, and then Progressive Field. I've heard there's technology in the Indians clubhouse that simulates video. It's a hitting machine, pitching machine, but it simulates the delivery and the pitches of, I think, every pitcher. That's the way it was explained to me. Is, is that true? And if so... How common is that technology, mm -hmm. and what tangible difference do you feel that's made? Yeah, good question. So there is a there's a new tool, a new piece of software, a new piece of hardware, which um, we're testing with. It's not uh, all that common yet. Um, some teams have it. Uh, I guess there's probably a little bit of time before we have to figure out how successful it's been or not, but that's always our goal is to be better at everything else and to be on the bleeding edge from a technology standpoint, mm -hmm. a hiring standpoint, a development standpoint, and so on. So right. that specific example is one thing where hey, if we can get a little bit of an advantage to use some real-time data, the stat cast data and so on, to simulate a pitch at speed and where it breaks and where it moves up and down and sideways, laterally and so on, and that can help a hitter learn and develop, we'll do it. What is the anecdotal evidence from that? I know you say you have, it hasn't been around long enough to look at, at any data or st stats, but do the guys like it? Uh, good question. I don't think I can answer that yet because yeah. I actually haven't had that direct conversation with them. Right. I, the couple of conversations I've had with some of our player development guys is that they're really impressed by it. I know we are going to try it out in Arizona, too, right. and maybe we'll have more, more than one of them. And that's probably where it's even more important because that's where we're having year-round development of guys. Guys sure. that are rehabbing, guys that just got drafted, guys that are going to play the Arizona Summer League, the Arizona Fall League. To me, that type of stuff is incredibly exciting because you can use technology and see immediate results. That's what's so different from, I think, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I, I was new to this industry 10 years ago. And one of the things that I realized that it's so idiosyncratic about how you can use technology to have very specific outcomes and the better you do with that you can create a competitive advantage and that's that's one example of where we're trying to do that and this to everybody knows the dynamics and the financial dynamics of this market and of major mm -hmm. league baseball your coastal cities your big markets have this huge financial advantage and then you look at the markets kind of in the middle of the country cincinnati's cleveland's kansas city detroit 
Pittsburgh, Minnesota. They yeah. have to be smarter. They're not. They're not going to be able to outspend anybody. Mm-hmm. You look at what the Dodgers are spending per victory compared to what the Guardians are spending per victory, mm-hmm. and I, it's stunning to me. But you have to work that way, Bobby. You've been in this organization for a lifetime. You've seen great managers. You've seen some that just can't seem to get get the, their handle on it. <laughs> I want to drill down on Tito because everybody that's covered the game for the last 20 years, if they're paying attention, they will readily tell you if he's not the best that's done it over the last 20 years, he's certainly at the top of the list. And some say he may be the best that's ever done it. He seems like such a simple guy, and I know that's an act. What is it in your mind that separates him from all of the other managers where he can take a group of young kids, 17 first-time major leaguers, and make a win 90 games in a season. That's not supposed to happen. The specialness of Tito is the fact that, to me, having watched him, I've dealt with 15 managers, I think it is, in my career. <laughs> um, easily the best, and I hope Mike Hargrove isn't watching right now. Uh, <laughs> And Mike was a hell of a manager. Mike, Mike's number two. There's no question. Sure. I mean, 700 plus wins for us. Tito just passed him and, and Lou Boudreau as the all-time winningest managers. There's three things in his style of leadership. And he always laughs when I tell him this is what I tell people. But there's three things that he does in his style of leadership that I've always been amazed with. First and foremost, he is absolutely authentic. He is genuine. He doesn't try to pretend he's somebody else. Mm -hmm. When people get in a position of leadership, one of the first things they try to do is be somebody else. Instead of who they are, to be genuine and authentic. This is who I am, so this is who you know you're dealing with in this position as manager. So he's authentic. The second thing he does, which I think is beautiful in our sport, is he embraces individuality. There's too many coaches and managers who you walk the same way he walks. You Mm -hmm. walk the same way he walks. I want you to look like him. That's not Tito knows. And play like. Yeah. Tito was a number one draft pick out of the University of Arizona for the Montreal Expos. Hit 350 before he blew out his knee. I mean, he was a star player coming from the lineage of his dad who was a star player. And... He understands there's something inside each and every athlete that made them get to the big leagues. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to change that? So true. Now, you better have a respect for your teammates, and you better have a respect for the game of baseball. If you don't have that, then you, I'm lost. You're lost in my world. That's what he teaches, the respect and professionalism. But other than that, the clothes you wear, the music you listen to, Mm -hmm. those sorts of things, um, hey, have at it. It's who you are as a person. And then lastly, it's service to others. He cares more about everybody else than he does himself. The guy that sits outside our clubhouse door is the security guard that you say hello to when you come in and see and go to those press conferences down in the service. He cares about that guy and the clubhouse guys and his players way more than he does about himself. So there's some, and he's learned that over the years. I mean, he was not a very good manager with not very good players in Philadelphia. He struggled. Yeah, Yeah. in those four years. And then he got another chance in Boston where he was able to refine. And then his relationships with Mark Shapiro and Chris Antonetti and uh, uh, Mike Chernoff brought him home um, Thankfully, and before all of that, he managed you know, your guy, right. Michael yeah. Jordan. Yeah, I know, oh yeah, I know he did. Did, did. Have you ever talked to Michael about no, that? Because I'd love to hear what yeah. he had to say about his time in, to, uh, in Birmingham. I and, might have to look at that and see what that is. But I, I, I hear Tito refer to it from time to time, right? Right. About right. The experience. But I, I, I'm glad you, you you said something, Bobby. Tito has found out that uh, he empowered the players. But I think the biggest acquisition uh, was selling the the contract with Ramirez and making sure he became the face of the organization. Absolutely. And how has that panned out internally inside that locker room? Well, I mentioned earlier 200 athletes. It it it's the message spread to every one of them. Uh, what a special place this is. If a guy like Jose Ramirez is going to 
conservatively leave 50 million yep. on the table, yep. whatever, to stay where he's comfortable. The team that signed him at 17 years old out of the Dominican and a kid who was a chance to play shortstop at the big leagues and then was sent to AAA because he wasn't getting it done and we didn't just toss him aside. We still believed in him and wanted to be a part of this organization. If it, an incredible day, I think it was April 5th, if I have my dates correct, because I think we, we announced it on the 6th. The 5th was when Paul was in Cleveland on a Zoom mm -hmm. and Chris and the interpreter and Jose's agent and Jose were in a room in Goodyear and they hashed out the deal. It sent um, incredible positive vibes throughout our entire organization. I'd hate to think where this Most team would be without Most important turning point of the season. <laughs> you know what? In recent team history, yeah. Yeah. yeah, when your best player plays the hardest, it sets the tone for everyone else. And I made the point, I think last week, Jay and I were talking about this. I said, he's not going to win. I know he's not going to win MVP, but you'll never convince me that there's a player more valuable to his team than Jose Ramirez is the Guardians. Aaron Judge's numbers are spectacular. He's more than deserving. Shohei Otani is more than deserving. I don't have a vote. I'll let the voters <laughs> slug that out. But if you want to talk value to a team, yeah. it's Jose Ramirez hands down. Without question. Just on the rub-off factor alone. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you look at where this organization is positioned, I think one of the things that outsiders, we've become used to it. They're overachieving. They're doing, how are they doing this? They're doing more with less. Mm -hmm. How does the rest of baseball look at what you guys have done? And success always breeds emulation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you're getting calls. There are a lot of people in the sport trying to figure out what the secret sauce is? Yeah, it's a good question. I, mean, I think the best indicator of it is when the season's over and then there's this window of time when everybody starts to recruit and poach from other teams. Chris and Shuri in our front office on the baseball operations side, they field an enormous amount of calls. I can they, imagine. They yeah, want, when John Sherman calls people. this winter, don't answer. <laughs> yeah, right. please don't answer. So that's coming. <laughs> those, I mean, that's one of those behind the scenes things that people don't realize. They have to suddenly get in this mode of how do I keep these Right. gems of people here or how do I help them with their career and move on to something better and I think that's one of the things that we do really well is it's all about the person as well so if the best opportunity for them is to move to another team and set their own course mm -hmm. and have a promotion and do their own thing we're not adverse to that as well on the baseball side or, or on the business that's side. that's rare in pro sports because I think it shows loyalty as yeah. well and so if people know that you're looking out for them for their best interest here but also for their best interest potentially somewhere else they're more loyal when they're here and they talk well about you when they're there as well that word spreads yeah that loyalty spreads and that cycle is a virtuous cycle and it it, it, it may not you may not see it you know right today but it pays off tomorrow and next year and the year after and so on and that's one of the things that I've never been in an organization before, and so baseball was the first sports organization I was in when I came really? here. I've never been in an organization before that does as much for their, their people when they're there, but also encourages them to have a life beyond it and look out for their best interests, even maybe not being there, right? So, so now when you, when you talk about that, you talk about commitment, right? Yeah. So the commitment to, to the organization and your, your people who make up the organization. Yeah. You, it, talk, talk to us about the commitment from the Guardians, the city of Cleveland, mm -hmm. where it's going. I know you've got this big, uh, uh, state and renovation project coming on yeah. and the things you're doing to, to make sure that the gardens are on good footing here and the community is in, 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 in getting a good return on its investment. Yeah, good question. I appreciate you asking that. Um, we, you know, we finalized a new lease with uh, the city of Cleveland and Cuyahoga County and, and the state of Ohio in December. And it runs through? It's a 15-year lease with two five-year options, right? Okay, so great. we're here for, we're, we're here for, um, you know, it was actually added on 13 years to our lease, so we're here through at least, I think, 2035. Right. And then there's, there's two five-year options after that. There was never a world we ever wanted to imagine ourselves not here. Um, that was incredibly important for us to be at Cleveland. And the first, you know, the, the word Cleveland on, the, on everybody's shirts is that's what it's about, and we want the Guardians to be part of here for another 100 years. Our commitment is to deliver, I mean, our, our mission is pretty clear, right? Win the World Series and deliver a compelling fan experience which is one of the things that I love about this organization is I can always, it's very easy for me to, to tie the things that I do to one or both of those two things. Mm -hmm. Win baseball games, win a World Series, have people come to our park, enjoy themselves and come back. It's pretty simple. Um, we have a commitment to the city and to the Cuyahoga County and Northeast Ohio to continue to do the things to allow those things to happen. One of those is to modernize the ballpark. So through that lease, um, we have a private public endeavor where we're gonna do a ton of renovations over the next three years. You're gonna start to see them 
probably not until the, the 24 season. We'll start knocking things down and building new things after next season, so a year from now. But as you know, a ton of planning on going right now, a lot of design work. I think hopefully maybe a month from now, we'll start to kind of show some pretty pictures and, and show what it's gonna look like and so on. And along the way, we need to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's always a, a regular and justified conversation about how do you use private and public money and make sure that it's not just for baseball games, but it's, it's done in a diverse and inclusive and equitable way. So how do we ensure that there's the right level of participation from our community, from small businesses, from large businesses, from medium-sized businesses, of people of all types and colors and shapes and sizes, so that what we do can be a blueprint for these types of things going forward. Because there's gonna be more teams and more organizations who are looking for contracts and dollars and leases and so on in the future. And if we can be a little bit of a blueprint or a solution kit to do that right, that's that'll be a good thing. So the gardens are taking a, a yeah. different stance on this. On future construction project, you're trying to make sure that there's uh, equity and inclusion out here, mm -hmm. that you give all entities that can participate in the process a, an opportunity to participate, yeah. not just on this project, but s hopefully springboard into other projects in the county and the city of Cleveland. Yeah. And I think you guys are talking about how deliberate you guys are being with it. Yeah, we're trying to be as intentional about it as possible. One of the things we realized early on was we're going to do this project and then it's going to end. And so we'll do our best to make it the most inclusive project during that period of time, but we won't have really succeeded if it's not a value for the next project or the next 10 projects, or the next 20 projects. There isn't a great blueprint in Cleveland now or, or in a lot of cities for how to do it right necessarily. So we're trying to help build that blueprint. And there's a lot of you know, great folks in Mayor Bibbs organization right now. Um, Council President Blank Griffin is working a lot right now on trying to build that blueprint. If we can be a little bit a little part of that for how you spend this money, because it's a lot of money. I mean, we realize this is a ton of money. How you spend it right so that it helps going forward, because this project's going to end, right? The 2025 season will probably be done with all these projects. But for the next project, the next 100 projects over that, if we can show what it means to get small businesses, small diverse businesses um, ready to bid on a project, right? Understand what it means to get certified. Understand what it means to get small amounts of capital to get bonded to participate in a project. Mm -hmm. They may not work on our projects at all. In fact, there's a good chance a lot won't. But if it helps them for the next project, we've done something right. And so helping to build that blueprint is a big part of what we're doing. It's part of our community benefits plan. Um, we just met, Mayor, you were there. We have a community review group. We met last week for the first time every few months from people from all over the city and government positions and non-governmental positions to say, give us feedback. Because we don't 100% know what we're doing here, but we need to hear what the right way is to do it so we can learn and learn and learn and get better at it. And hopefully when the project is done, somebody else learns from that as well. And from that, you could talk about, because you're, you're building an ultimate fan experience. And so I know when Bobby walked in, I asked, okay, Bobby, how many tickets you got left over here? <laughs> right, because everybody wants this ticket. So talk about yeah. the, well, we still have it looks few, like this we weekend. We still have a few for Friday and Saturday and a little bit more uh, for Sunday. Most people think we're sweeping, so they they haven't bought into Sunday yet, I guess. Best, I hope so. Best two out of three. That's yeah. uh, um, How is it shaping out right now? Tampa. It, it, yeah. I, we think we, we're playing Tampa. Tampa. We were talking yeah. last week. That was the one team I don't want to see. <laughs> yeah. Because mm. it's like the Spider-Man meme where they're, <laughs> he's looking at himself. They're kind of built in the image yeah. of the Guardians. They, they, they spend their money very wisely. Yep. Um, Kevin and Tito, it's like watching you know two chess masters yep. play a game at a higher level. Kevin's and all three of yeah. those games... Now, they didn't mean anything to us, but they were all one-run games. Right. Two of them were extra innings. Mm -hmm. I think a Tampa-Cleveland series would be riveting. Is going to be great baseball. Settle in. The, the, difference yeah. Settle between in right. us, yeah. Yeah, the difference between us is um, our starting pitching is so much better than theirs. But in a short series, you can go with guys who are only throwing three innings. And, right. and get Kevin, out of Kevin will do bull, he can yeah. do bullpen games. For all three, if for he wanted to. The whole postseason for and the he'd likely, first series. Right? I imagine he likely would. Yeah, I would think the way their um, rotation isn't as solid as right. ours. Um, no, there's, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Kevin Cash is sitting in Tampa because of Tito. Absolutely. There's no question yeah. about that. Kevin would be the first to tell you that. Um, terrific guy. We just did a little internal thing honoring Tito quietly um, with just the baseball group and then a few of us uh, uh, honoring him for being the franchise's all-time winningest manager and one of the reasons we waited until Tampa came to town is so that Kevin could be a part of it and say a few words that's nice and uh, we flew Brad Mills in oh, wow. nice um, his best friend his college roommate um, 
they were both freshmen on the University of Arizona's baseball team together and have been best friends ever since. And Millsy, you know, has been his bench coach everywhere and other than the stint when he was managing the Astros. Um, but we are, we're in a good spot good. ticket-wise. We just need to get over that hump. And uh, we don't sell SRO until all the seats are sold. So right. people need to... If you're holding off, just wanting to wait for an SRO, that doesn't happen. I told I told seat. some buddies that over the weekend. I said, look, look, because they said, yeah, well, we're going to get them next week. And I go, well, you better not wait, because if you if you wait, yep. I think a lot of people do. Yeah. But um, when I was over there last week, I, I was asking around about the ticket sales, right. and they were brisk and they were good at the point. Yeah. A lot of people are going to wait until late next week or late this week, and they're, you're, you're going to have to watch the games on television. <laughs> if, if being in the stadium is important, and most baseball fans would much rather be there, right. don't wait because you're going to get locked out. Friday is going to be way too late to do this. And God, I want to thank you guys for coming in. Yeah. Thank you for um, having us. Appreciate it. We, having we, we love the sport. We do. Yeah, I know we, you we do. We try to push it all yep. we can. And what we constantly get pushed back in is, but this is a Brownstown. This is a Brownstown. <laughs> okay, fine. I waved the white flag on it's a Brownstown. But right now, the Browns are 2-2 two and two and underperforming, and we've got a team that isn't just overperforming by the organization standards. Right. This team, and I know because I talk to folks with other organizations, is the envy of Major League Baseball, and you could say they're the envy of professional sports. How you guys do what you do with what you have to work with is some sort of magic act, but keep it up and keep pulling those rabbits out of the hat. And who knows what happens when you get to October? Well, it's going to be a hell of a ride. Thank you. It certainly is yeah. going to be fun. It is. Yeah. Bobby, Neil, thank you very much. Yeah. We're going to take you. a Appreciate quick break. Hey, hey, we're, not, we're not going to break. We're not going to break. I want to promote the fact that we are going to do a playoff post game oh, Guardian show. Yes. So after the Guardians game, we'll have a, at the final out, G. Bush, Earl, and some other people maybe will be uh, involved with that. We want to thank Curtis and do you want, instead of breaking, do you have a final take you have to do, Jason? Do you have a final take no, you have to do? I don't, not, not no, I have let's, to. let's no. say goodbye. Let's just. There's no point in breaking. It All right, very good. Five minutes, yep. so. I mean, I was going to basically my final take was going to be what I just said. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I wanted to plead to the fans. I, I know people say it's a football town. Okay, it's a baseball town too. Yep. Uh, my dad used to tell me stories of how he would go to the old stadium, and I used to go to the old stadium, and there'd be you know a vendor for every fan. There was you know <laughs> five thousand, six thousand fans there. Uh, but my dad was a fan in the 40s and 50s, and he'd say, coming to the game was was a privilege. you know. And, and it was most games when he would come, it was packed. Yep. So I, can, I know that our population has dwindled, and I know that our, our economics, as it pertains to other cities, may not be what it can. But it's still the best bargain in town. <laughs> you can get tickets at a bargain price. You don't have to pay for the – if you think the food's too expensive, eat a meal before you come. You don't have to eat at the stadium. But – Support this baseball team because if there's a team in town that deserves your support, it's this Let one. Let me tell you real quick. I was I covered NBA Finals in the at the Quicken Loans Arena at the right. time. Now Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, the Browns, whatever. There is nothing more magical than a sold out Progressive Field, absolutely rocking for a. I, I will stand by that. And I am with you step for step. I mean, the the queue is loud and it's a great environment. It's a lot of fun. And maybe it's just because I'm a child. I was a teenager in early 20s and then through, through the great 90s runs. Mm -hmm. There's something magical about Progressive Field when that place is packed and rocking. Yeah. It's a good, good time. Can, I'm looking forward to it. Can I say, do your players, do they know what's about to happen this weekend? Do you? Do well, they no, know? they don't because they, there's 17 yeah. rookies yeah. and they've been playing in front of 10,000 people. It's, so they're going to see what happens. It's yeah. pretty funny when they, they you can yeah. see them sit around Sandy mm -hmm. and they'll ask them some questions okay. about – because they look up and they see this place was sold out every day of your whole career that yeah. you played insane. here. Yeah. It is and he's insane. like, well, not my whole career, but Just most about. of it. <laughs> yeah. And it was ridiculous that when we walked out on the field, 7-10 game, we purposefully went out at 10-6 to instead of 6-10 to warm up because it was already packed and you just got the adrenaline. Felt oh, the energy. Wow. And yeah. people screaming from, you know, a half hour before the game. He said if we didn't allow people in at that time um, to watch our guys hit because right. they hit first. But the visiting team, 
would hit in front of 20,000 fans. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they incredible. all would walk around like, I want to play here. And by the way, the stadium's capacity was much bigger than 43. Then. It was yeah, much bigger. Yeah, back then. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah, um, yeah. October baseball is, again. for my money, it's, it's the best thing in all totally of sports. Great. And we're yep. blessed and we're lucky enough to have it. And please enjoy it because there's never a guarantee that it's going to happen every single year. I know with Tito, we're getting spoiled. Exactly. Uh, but uh, <laughs> what, what a – Man, I don't even want to let myself think about that. <laughs> but uh, we're counting victories from, from here on out. Guys, thank you very much. Thank we you. Thank you. thank you guys thank for watching the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. We're on a 22-hour break. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk much more about Guardians. We'll talk about the Browns. And hopefully this football team is going to figure it out sooner than later. See you tomorrow. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.